Hi, just wanted to tell you something really important before you watch the free course. On top of that, I made a free community on school called Star Sellers and it's for Etsy sellers where you can share your achievements, you can share your problems that you might have and other people will help you and I will also be in the community as well to help you and the most important thing of all, you will be surrounded by people who have the same interest as you and you might even make some good friends along the way. So watch the free course first and if you find value in it and you like it, then you can click the first link in the description, answer a couple of questions and I will let you in the community. Now, I want this community to be good so I will not let people in who have fake profile pictures. You will need to have a real photo of yourself as your profile picture and you will need to have your real name as well. But it's not over. I also have a free gift for you. I made the Star Seller Planner, which includes all the steps of the free course, but it will not make sense if you don't watch the free course first. Click the second link in the description, enter your email, and you will receive your planner. Or you can get the planner inside of the free community. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching my videos, and this is my gift for you. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Thanos and welcome to the free Etsy course where I'm going to show you how to make your first $1,000 on Etsy. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Thanos, I'm a top 5% Etsy seller, I've grown two digital shops from scratch to 1k per month, I'm very familiar with digital products, especially with printable wall art, printable cake toppers and printable birthday cards. I also have experience with print on demand because I used to sell actively on Redbubble and Public, and I'm also an Adobe Photoshop expert and I have some experience with providing my services to others. Okay, so who is this course for and why is it free? This course is for complete beginners, it's for people who haven't made any sales on the platform yet, it's for people who can't make consistent sales on Etsy, and it's for people who want to make at least $1,000 per month on Etsy. Okay, but why is it free? It's free because I want to give something back to the community and I want everyone to be able to make at least $1,000 per month on Etsy. Here's a question I get a lot in my YouTube comments. How to open an Etsy shop if it's not available in your country? There is only one way in my opinion. You need to find a trusted friend or a family member who lives in a country that is supported by Etsy. The first thing you're going to do is to create a common email where you and your trusted friend or family member have access to. After that, the trusted person will create a new Etsy shop using their own legal information and their own credit card. After that, you will do all the work on your Etsy shop and when the time comes where you need to get paid, you will give a percentage to the trusted person because they're going to deal with taxes afterwards. Okay, this is the only way. If you don't have a family member or a friend in another country, then I'm sorry to say that, but you will need to find something else to focus on. Okay, but how to open a new Etsy shop if you are already suspended? You will need to do the same thing as I told previously but your trusted person or your family member can be from the same country as you. Should you open a new Etsy shop if you're already an Etsy seller? If you have an Etsy shop which is at least 6 months old and you haven't made any sale yet, then I highly recommend to watch the course and create a new Etsy shop with me. If you get let's say 1 or 2 sales per month, then again you can start a new Etsy shop if you want. If you get, let's say, 10 sales and above per month, then watch the course and we will increase the sales eventually. Before we move to the first lesson, let me show you what you will learn throughout this course. The first lesson is about getting started on Etsy. The first thing I'm going to teach you here is how to change your mindset, how to select the product you're going to sell, how to select your niche, how to create your products, how to create your mockups, and how to open your Etsy shop. The second lesson is about how to create quality listings and how to set up your store. We're gonna learn how to upload mockups and digital files. We're gonna learn how to create titles, descriptions, tags, how to set the right prices, how to do the other listing details, how to set up your store, how to create a logo and a banner, how to fill the Etsy settings, and how to create new listings after we create our first one. 
The third lesson is about how to do marketing and promotion. We're going to learn how important is SEO for people to find your products, how to do social media. We're going to talk about Etsy ads. We're going to talk about email marketing, word of mouth, and how to set daily sales and discounts to attract customers. The fourth lesson is about how to deal with customers. We're going to learn how to handle your orders, how to give the best customer service, how to get five-star reviews, and how to deal with bad customers. And the last lesson is about how to scale your Etsy shop. You're going to learn how to analyze your stats and optimize your listings, how to manage your time effectively, how to create more listings, how to increase your sales, and how to work less and make more money. That's it for the introduction. See you in the first lesson. Welcome to the first lesson where you're going to learn how to get started on Etsy. Here's what you're going to learn in lesson one. Lesson one includes changing your mindset, how to select the product you're going to sell, how to select the niche you're going to sell in, how to create your products, how to create mockups, and finally, how to open your Etsy shop. Okay. The first lesson and probably the most important lesson in this course is to change your mindset. The first thing I want you to think about is that your goal isn't as hard as you think. Let's take the goal of the course as an example. Making $1,000 a month, okay? Making $1,000 per month isn't as hard as you think. There are so many people who make 10 k per month, $100,000 per month, millions per month. So making $1,000 per month is possible. $1,000 per month was a big achievement for me one year ago. Even I did it, so I'm sure you can do it as well. The hardest thing to make is your first dollar. If you make your first dollar, you can make your first $1,000. If you make $1,000, you can make $10,000. It goes like that. Okay, it isn't as hard as you think. The second thing I want you to do to change your mindset is to read books. I'm not gonna lie to you. The habit of reading books daily actually made it easier for me to reach $1,000 per month. If you can't make this a daily habit, I want you to at least try to read these two books I'm going to suggest to you. The first book I want you to read is The Millionaire Fast Lane. Let me tell you something about myself. I didn't read at all until the end of 2022. And this was actually the first book I read. And this book will help you escape the mindset of working a 9 to 5 job and retiring at 60 years old. It will create a new path for you where you can retire quicker doing something that you love. And the second book I want you to read is The Million Dollar Weekend. This book is about taking action now and it's a book that I'm currently reading. And it will help you launch your business in a weekend. I highly recommend to read these books. First, you're going to read The Millionaire Fastlane and then, after you're done with that, you're going to read The Million Dollar Weekend. Okay. The third thing you can do is to actually visit your goals every day. One thing you can do is to create a collage of goals that you want to achieve. Take mine as an example. Here, as you can see, I have the $1,000 per month. I have my YouTube channel where I want to reach 100,000 subscribers. I have also other things such as buying a new car or living in a nicer apartment and traveling the world. You can find images on the internet, then make a collage with those images, and then you can set it as your screen saver, you can set it as a lock screen on your phone, or you can even print it and hang it on your wall. Another thing I want you to do is to address your pains. Since you're watching this course, you clearly want to make more money. So this is one of your problems, you want to make more money. Okay, address other problems you have. You might live in an apartment that you don't like. You might feel like a loser because you don't make your dream amount of money. You might not be able to provide as much as you would like for your loved ones. My point is to convert your pain into strength to motivate you to actually achieve your goal. You need to accept that you will suck at first. You have to accept that your first listings on Etsy will be bad. And you're probably not going to make some sales. My first listings on Etsy were horrendous. I didn't make any sales. And because I failed first, I was able to create better listings over time and that led to my success. And the last thing is to take action. By the end of the first lesson, I want you to open your Etsy shop. 
don't wait to finish all the lessons in the course and then open your Etsy shop. You need to take action now. Take me as an example. Do you know when I thought about making this online course? It was in January. And now we have April. I waited three months. I waited because I wanted to buy a camera. I wanted to buy lights. I wanted to buy everything to make this course look good. But even with all of this, the course doesn't even look this good. Because remember the last thing I told you. You will suck at first. And this is my first serious course. Of course I'm going to suck at first. I didn't need to wait three months to make this better. It would be the same thing if I started in January. Take action now and accept that you will suck at it. Take action. Don't make the same mistake as me. Believe me, you will succeed faster if you do it now. Take action. Start now. Next, we have product selection. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you what products you can sell on Etsy. Okay, let's get started. There are four main categories of products you can sell on Etsy. The first one are digital products. Let's toss aside the slides and let's go to Etsy to actually show you what you can sell. I'm here on Etsy and let's type digital products on Etsy. Let's see what we can actually sell on Etsy. But first, what are digital products? Digital products are products or services you can sell in a digital format and customers can access them by downloading them or receiving them in their email. Now let's see some examples of digital products. People sell planners in a digital format. Like those. Digital planner for 2024, 2025, 2026, ADHD digital planner, planners for work, meal and grocery list planner, productivity planners, self-care planner. Another very popular example of a digital product is printable wall art. The sellers make the designs and the customers receive a JPEG or a PDF usually and they print it and they hang it on their walls. Okay, this is also the main product I sell in my store as well. Here, here are some examples. You can also write printable and then see the results that the uh, Etsy come up. Printable stickers. People sell their designs as a PNG file and then people actually print them, stick them to whatever they like. Like another example, printable birthday cards. This is also a product I have in my store. You make the design in an A4 size, the customer prints it, and then folds it in half, and then they write a message inside for the loved ones. Another very good example is coloring pages. Printable cake toppers. This is also one product I have in my store. Also another very popular digital product is templates. Mostly Canva templates. Templates for social media. Templates for PowerPoint. Resume template. Instagram posts. Party favor templates. Vending machine templates. Life coach templates, real estate templates, luxury social media templates, wedding templates. Another thing that uh, is very popular is SVG, PNG files. And yeah, if you love to design things, you can sell them. And another thing that's very popular are mockups. Every Etsy seller needs mockups. So selling mockups is a very good business idea if you want to start an Etsy shop selling mockups. Okay, you can sell t-shirt mockups, mug mockups, phone mockups, like poster mockups, iPhone, laptops, uh, iPads, blankets, necklaces, 
those are some of the most popular digital products you can sell on Etsy, okay? Let's move on to the next category. Print on demand. Let's type t-shirts. All of those things you see right here on the screen are people who just created those designs, then partnered with a print on demand company, which prints the design to the t-shirts, and they ship it to the customer. There are many products for print on demand. The most common are t-shirts, phone cases, as you can see right here, mugs, Posters. Posters are very popular. There probably are socks. Like leggings. The third category of products are physical products. These are things like jewelry, everything handmade right here sells. If you're good at making handmade things, you're going to sell on here. Every handmade product is welcome here. Even knives, earrings, keychains, mugs, uh, these things, necklaces, bracelets, blankets, everything crochet like that, bags, everything made out of wood, rings, custom tags, bowls, soaps, lamps. Wow. So basically, if you are good at making something that's physical, then yeah, you can absolutely sell it here. And the final category of products you can sell are services. Let's see those as well. Let's type services. This is my favorite one. Like, this is brilliant. People sell uh, psychic reading. Blind reading. Logo. Logo design. Astrology reading. 3D modeling and printing service. Help with SEO. Photoshop service. I can do this, to be honest with you. Customer service. Okay. Cleaning business logo. That, that's funny. Resume writing. Basically, if you're good at something, you can sell your service right here, okay? If you can do it digitally. I would put in the services personalized gifts. In the services category, I would put as well digital products that require some of your time. This uh, seller offers to take a photo of your scent, make it into this masterpiece right here. I would put in the services things like this right here. Personalized gifts like this. These are digital products, but they require some of your time to make them. So I see them as selling your service, not as selling just a digital product, because you need to work to be able to make this. Okay. You can absolutely make personalized products right here because they sell like crazy on Etsy. Like this one's Pokemon anniversary cards, like this is cool. But don't make copyright things like Pokemon or whatever else because they might close your shop. So yeah, that's the four main categories of products you can sell on Etsy. Think about what category you will choose and I'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to choose your niche. I want to talk about something first before I show you the bullet points. 
I'm sure many of you go to YouTube and type on the search bar Etsy Nisis 2024 or something like that, best Nisis to sell on Etsy. I'm sorry to say that, but if you actually follow the advice of those YouTube videos, you're probably not going to see some success. Just stop watching these types of videos. First of all, those YouTube videos have a lot of thousands of views, so you're choosing to compete with thousands of other Etsy sellers, okay? I'm not saying that thousands of other people are going to take action watching this video and actually compete with you. Most of them will watch the video and do nothing after that. Look, this one has 100,000 views, so I wouldn't suggest to actually follow these tips. Promise me that you won't watch these types of videos again, okay? Your goal is not to do what everyone else is doing. Almost 200,000 views, 62,000 views. Stop watching these types of YouTube videos, okay? Me, myself, I don't have those YouTube videos. Nah, look, I don't have any of those YouTube videos. I know that this is just a clickbait type of video that will get a lot of views, but this is not me. I just don't want to waste people's times. I could have made those YouTube videos and have more subscribers, or I probably made more money than I currently do, but I don't want to be that person and create those types of videos. I prefer to share with you the truth and the realistic results I get rather than making YouTube videos just to get many views. We have two types of niches, okay? We have the saturated and we have the unsaturated niches. So saturated niches are niches with a lot of competition. For example, if I search dog on Etsy, we can see right here that it has over 1000 results. They changed it now because not a long time ago it used to show us uh, the actual number of results, but now they changed it. I think dog had like a million results or something. Now they changed it so you can't actually see the amount of results this keyword has. But as you can see, there are a lot of pages. Probably if I type right here 100, it probably has 100 pages. Yep, it does. Right here we are on page 100. Let's type 300. Yep, it still has 300 pages, which is nuts. Oh no. Let's type 200. I mean, do the month. There are over 200 pages. So this is clearly a very saturated keyword. Okay, so this is a saturated niche. Let's type another saturated niche. Let's type, I don't know, teachers. Let's see if it has 100 pages. Yes, it does. It has above 100 pages. Let's see if it has 200 pages. It still has above 200 pages. This is clearly a saturated niche. It's hard to actually rank to the first pages because there is so much competition, okay? Now let's see an unsaturated niche as an example. Let's type... Um, let's type badminton. I, I don't know. It still has above 1000 results though. Let's type... Um, an unsaturated niche is a niche with less competition. So we need to find a niche with a lower number of results. The bad thing now is that we can't actually see the amount of results that it has, but... Okay, so the good thing is that we can actually find out how many results each keyword has. I'm using Allura and it has a free version as well. So we can see that the keyword dog has half a million of results, which is crazy. This, this is a saturated niche. Let's type something else, like... For example, I typed bowling into the search bar and I saw the similar keywords underneath and I actually found a very good keyword someone can create with a low amount of competition and a good amount of results. You can actually see how many results this got. Right here you can see also the score is 100. This is a very good result. This is a very good keyword. This is an unsaturated niche with a high amount of search volume. Now there are trendy niches and there are evergreen niches. A trendy niche is a niche that is popular, let's say right now, but it might not be as popular in two months. You can create for trendy niches and get quick sales, but in my opinion they are not so good for the long run. 
If you create for an evergreen niche, you will get sales lower, but people can buy from you throughout the year. Evergreen niches are very good for the long run in my opinion. Now let's say if you want to create for trendy niches, a thing you can do is to go to Google Trends. Now go to home right here, make sure United States is selected and type the niche that you want to create. Let's say I want to create for crochet. As you can see right here, it's relatively popular. Let's see AI prompts. If you want to sell AI prompts, it was speaking towards the end of October. And now it was speaking also at the end of February. Now it's dropping a lot, but it will pick up again probably. You can go here and search every keyword that you want to make sure that it's relatively popular throughout the year. Now let's go back a bit to saturated versus unsaturated niches. Should you create for a saturated niche or for an unsaturated niche? Well, you can either choose both in my opinion. Most of people will recommend you to choose an unsaturated niche to get sales faster, but in my opinion you can actually choose whatever you want. Now let's see how we create for a saturated niche. Let's see right here for the word dog. Let's go down a bit to the similar keywords and we can see many similar keywords. Okay, and we can actually get ideas from here. You can actually sort them by the score right here, like dog feeder. Okay, you can see bulldog picture. It has a high number of search volume and a low amount of competition and some good amount of sales, okay? This is a way to create for keywords instead of saturated niches. You can see that you can create for keywords with a high number of search results and a low amount of competition. This is a good way into getting to saturated niches and actually managing to rank up into the first pages. Okay, let's see some others. Dogzilla. It has a high amount of searches and a low amount of competition as you can see. Dog carrier for bike. 92 competition. As you can see, we have many keywords we can choose to create for a great amount of score. Let's actually try to... to find for digital products as well. Okay, we have dog clip art. If the search volume is higher than the competition, then you can absolutely create for this niche. It also has a very good amount of sales. I typed paddle into the search bar. And as you can see, look at the amount of search volume. Paddle is now a very popular sport, it's, it's basically tennis. Like look at this amount. To be fair, it doesn't have a lot of sales, but this is a way you can find good unsaturated niches if you want. But you can go with the other way and find saturated niches and create for keywords that you can rank. And if you get a good amount of sales, then you can create for bigger keywords and I'm sure that you will dominate on your niche. Okay, we talked about how to find your niche, but before you choose your niche, I want you to think about your ideal customer. I want you to think about the customer first. I want you to choose profitable customers, customers that can spend money purchasing your products and purchasing over and over again. So before you choose your niche, think about the customer first. Also, I want you to think about why customers are buying your products. In my case, people are buying my products for birthday occasions. I want you to identify why customers are buying your products. If it's for birthdays like me, people have their birthdays every day. So you're not going to run out of customers. But let's say your customers are buying your products only for Christmas. Then you're going to have sales only right before Christmas. So in the other seasons of the year, you will not have any sales. Pick a customer that is financially stable. Pick a customer that can buy from you throughout the year. And believe me, you will get consistent sales with that strategy on Etsy. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that Etsy has mainly female customers. So your products need to be aesthetically pleasing to the female eye. For example, my niece is sports in my shop. Men tend to like sports more than women, okay, statistically. But 95% of the time, my customers are females, okay, because Etsy has a female audience. Okay, so think about your customer first, and then think about what niche you're going to choose. And then use Aluna to find you great keywords. I don't want you to overthink this, but I want you to think about this before you start. I want you to take your time and research for a couple of hours before choosing your niche. Once you find your niche and the product you're going to create, 
I want you to go on Etsy and find the best sellers in your niche. Now, I typed Boho Wall Art into the sales bar. Now, let's go to All Filters, then choose Star Seller, then click Show Results. Then, I want you to go to the top of the page and choose the word Star and write with the word Best. Okay, now we're going to see all the best sellers in this niche. Since these are all best sellers, it means that these are some successful listings. A good strategy would be to actually copy what those sellers are doing, and but in your own version. But I don't want you to overdo this. I don't want you to do the exact same copy of this one, for example. You're not going to sell, my friend. I want you to just look at all those best sellers right here and take inspiration from them. Don't copy and paste them. For example, make something similar to that. Don't copy and paste it. So that's all for the niche selection. Think about a customer that will spend money in your shop multiple times, then find your niche that this customer is probably interested in, and then the next thing is to create the products. See you soon. Welcome to the lesson 4, creating the products. Now, I'm not going to show you how to create the products in detail, but I promise I will make a separate course on this in the future. Now, I do have a free course on my YouTube channel where I show you how to create printable wall art. If you are interested in that, then you can check out this video. I will also link it in the description. Now, let's go back to the slides. First of all, I'm going to show you how to create digital products. To be able to make most of the digital products, you will need to have some type of editing software. I recommend three options. Let me also show them to you. The most beginner-friendly option is Canva. You can create everything right here and it has many templates for you to choose from. And it's also free. Now, the second option is Adobe Photoshop, which is the most popular photo editing software. The only bad thing is that it's not free and it requires a monthly subscription. But if you want to use Adobe Photoshop and you don't want to pay for it, then you can use Photopy. This is basically Adobe Photoshop on a web page. It has exactly the same tools as Photoshop and it's free. So it's very good to start with this one and if you want you can upgrade later to the original Adobe Photoshop. Okay, we found the software but how to find the dimensions for the digital products we're going to sell? Let's go to Etsy. For example, I'm going to pick digital downloads and as you can see we have one here. Oh, this is an ad. I'm sorry. Let's pick this one right here. Pick a best seller and then go to the item details right here. First of all, they are offering one PDF and one RTF. Mainly you want PDF and JPEG for PW Wall Art. Okay, now scroll down right here and you will see that this seller offers a 4x5 ratio, a 3x4 ratio, a 2x3 ratio, a4, a3, a2, a1, US paper size, and 11 by 14 ratio. Now you don't have to create all of those options right here. You can create the most popular of those, but the more you offer, the better the chances of someone buying from you. But how am I supposed to create all of these sizes? We have 4 by 5, 8 by 10, 16 by 20, 40 by 50. How am I supposed to do all that? You will create only 6 files. You're going to go to each ratio of this, and you're going to create your design in the biggest size possible. You want to create the 18 by 24 inches and this because it is the same ratio file, it will print to those sizes as well. Okay, so you need to create the biggest size from the ratio and then it will print to the smaller sizes and you will need to do it for each one of them. So overall you will create 6 sizes and then you will list in the description the smaller sizes. Alright, let's see another example of digital products. Let's go to templates. As you can see right here, most of these are editable templates. Most of the templates on Etsy are made in Canva. So you can go to Canva, then go to all templates, and then you can choose what template you want. There are many free options right here, as you can see. Let's say I want to create Instagram posts. Then I can go to one of them, let's say this one, 
you can customize it, play with it. If you like, then you can go this one here and this one there and then change it a bit and you can actually sell this. You can copy the link right here. You tap share and then copy the link. And then when someone buys the template from you, they will receive the link. And when they copy it and paste it into the search bar, they will be able to log into Canva and change your template to make it as they would like. Let's say right here, I want to type Thanos, I don't know. And now they can download it on their account. Okay, this is how most of the templates are made on Etsy. Let's see one more example for digital products. Let's go to Etsy again. Let's type birthday cards. Let's go right here and type let's type digital downloads. And let's see this one. Now they're offering four PDF files. I don't know what they have in four PDF files. They have multiple colors. So that's why they have four PDFs. It doesn't say it right here, but birthday cards are usually made in name for size. And then all you have to do is to print it and then fold it in half. And then it is an A5 size. That's all to create a birthday card. So this is all the process, just any digital product that you want to create and then go to the item details and, and see what sizes they are offering or how they manage to create it. Let's move on. Let's go to print on demand. To be able to sell print on demand on Etsy, you will need to connect your Etsy shop to a printing company like Printify, Printful, and Zelat. These are just some names of printing companies you can work with. Let's see one for example. Let's go to Printify. You can see right here how it works. You can select the product you will sell then you will create the designs and upload the file to Printify. You will connect your Etsy shop to Printify. And when the customer orders, you will enjoy the profit and Printify will do all the work for you. All right. Now, right here, you can see the catalog of products they offer. As you can see, they have men's clothing, t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, long sleeves, tank tops, sportswear, bottoms, swimwear, shoes, women's clothing, the same things, but something changes. We have kids' clothing, food, health, beauty, I don't know what this one, but okay. We have accessories like phone cases, bags, socks, underwear, hats, face masks, okay. Baby accessories, mouse pads, pets, jewelry, Kitchen accessories, car accessories, tech accessories, travel accessories, stationary accessories, and other things. And we have the category of home and living. We have mugs, which are very popular. Glassware, bottles, and tumblers are very popular. Canvas, posters, very popular. Postcards, ornaments, journals, and notebooks, very popular as well. Magnets and stickers, very popular. Home decor, bathroom towels, blankets, pillows and covers, games, rugs, mats, and seasonal decorations. Okay, there are tons of products you can create. And the pricing also. For example, for Britify, you can absolutely start for free. And then you can upgrade to premium to get more discount to all the products that you sell so that you get a bigger margin. Okay, I want to create print on demand, but how to find the dimensions for the designs I'm going to create? Go back to Britify and let's choose one t-shirt right here. Let's say we want this one and tap start designing. We're here on the editor and we can upload our design to the t-shirt. We click on upload and as we can see right here, we can upload JPEG, PNG and SVG file types. The most popular choice is PNG because with PNGs you can have a transparent background and it's better for t-shirts. And as you can see right here, it has to be less than 100 megabytes. So this is the, the dimension and this is the maximum you can upload right here. This is way too big. So just go with the recommended size. Okay. And you can do this for all the products right here. You can go to the upload and see 
all the recommended sizes. Let's move on. Let's go to physical products. Now I don't sell physical products, so I'm not able to show you how to create physical products. If you want to sell physical products, you probably know how to make them already. For you, all I have to show you is the mockups in the next lesson. And lastly, for services, let's go again to Etsy and type services. Now, for example, let's see this one. Now, again, I'm not going to tell you how to provide the service to people. This is something that you should be able to figure out yourself. You don't have to create any product because you sell a service. All you have to do is to share with people that you can absolutely do the work that you promise. All you have to do is to show proof of the service that you sell. And we will talk more about what you can do in the next lesson with mockups. Okay, see you there. Welcome to the next lesson where we're going to learn how to create mockups. So why are mockups so important? The mockup is the first thing the customer will ever see of your product. It's the decider if the customer will click on your product or not. So the mockup can make or break your product. So having good quality mockups will definitely make you more sales. So let me show you how to make mockups. Okay, now that we have our designs ready, we need to make mockups. So there are lots of ways to create mockups. I would actually type Boho poster mockup, maybe. So I think something like, I think something like, I think something like this is good, to be honest with you. Or, if you don't want to buy one, you can go to websites like Freepik and type poster mockup. And right here to the filters you can go and choose free. And Freepik has the option to choose PSD, which is the file for Photoshop. And I'm gonna choose that. Let's actually type Boho poster mockup. Okay, as you can see, they actually have some okay mockups. Like, they're actually okay. Let's download one. Like, I've seen this mockup a lot, so do not use this. Like, I think, like, I would, I would find the framed mockup, not without the frame. Okay, so <laughs> funny enough, we found a cactus, like we have to use this. Just click to this arrow and, and click on the PSD file. We're gonna create only one mockup to show you how you can create it. So try and find some good mockups right here and use them the way I'm gonna show you in a bit. Okay, now that our file is downloaded, we're gonna go and drop it. And what is that? Okay, just click OK, I guess. We're gonna want to delete that. The bad thing is that 
Etsy allows only square images for thumbnails. So, we're actually gonna go and create a new file, go and change this to pixels, and make it this 3000 by 3000 pixels, okay? And we're gonna want to create this. Now we have a square image. Select all this like we did before. There is a lock right here. We need to tap this to unlock it. Okay. Now go to the first layer and go to the last layer and type shift. And just like before, control C. Right here, control V. Okay. Now you need to zoom out. You can use this magnifying glass right here, which is the zoom tool. And we're gonna need to make this smaller. Okay. And we need to fit this into the image. Like something like this. Nice. And now, as you can see, the file has a layer which says design here. Here, double tap. And use OK. OK to all of this, we do not care. And now, all we have to do is drag and drop our file here. Now, go to here, find our file, the 2x3, I guess. And go to Photoshop and drop this here. OK. We're gonna need to make it bigger to fit. Okay. And now, if we go back, and now click Control S, which saves it. And now if we go back here, it happens. did go wrong right here and I had to make some adjustments for some reason but we've done it actually that's it we just need to go to file save a copy and then type boho cactus thumbnail okay and again save it as jpeg Okay, so now we need to create more mockups like this one. Since we got the thumbnail, we do not care about making the other mockups to the square image. Etsy allows other formats like vertical or horizontal. Okay, so you need to create more of those, at least one or two more. So I'm gonna show you how you can also put your design inside the mockup without the BSD file. And we can use free stock photos to do that. I'm here on Pexels and I typed Boho Poster Mockup. As you can see, we have many mockups right here. And I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna click free download. And this is downloaded. Okay, now I'm gonna take our image and I'm gonna drag and drop it inside the Photoshop. Okay. So now we have this image right here. I'm gonna use the shortcut Control plus to zoom in. You can also use this zoom tool right here to the left. And I'm gonna use the pen tool, which is here, as you can see, pen tool. And I'm gonna click to each corner to create a point. I'm doing this to create a mask, so we can be able to put our design inside the frame. And now I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna choose Make Selection. 
OK, just click OK. Now we have a selection. I'm going to unlock the background layer. And then I'm going to press Delete. I'm going to press Ctrl D to deselect the selection. Now this is transparent right here, and we can actually put our design right here. I'm going to locate our design, and I'm going to drag and drop it inside of Photoshop. I'm going to put our layer to the bottom, and then I'm going to make it bigger so it can fit the frame. And I'm going to transform it so it fits better to the mockup. OK. OK, I think this is OK. Now, it doesn't look so natural. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer right here like we did before. And I'm going to choose Brightness and Contrast. I'm going to clip this adjustment layer to the background. And I'm going to make it brighter. OK. I'm going to also make an adjustment layer for our design. And I'm going to choose Exposure. I'm going to clip it again. And I'm going to lower it until it looks natural to the eyes. I think this does look natural. And I'm going to make another one, another brightness and contrast. And I'm not going to clip it to anywhere. And this is going to chase overall the mockup to make it look more natural. OK, so this is it. We're going to go to File, then save a copy. And I'm going to type Cactus Mockup. OK, and I'm going to save it. Now, you can actually delete our design right here. And you can actually save this as a template to create many mockups in the future. I'm going to go to File, then save a copy. And I'm going to create either a PNG if you want to just use this. Or you can actually choose to save it as a PSD file to have all the adjustment layers. I'm going to save it as a PSD and we're done. I'm sure you've seen some of those, but you need to create, let's type digital wall art. OK, let's go to one of them. Let's go to here. And I'm sure they will have a note to tell them that this is a digital product. I mean, all sizes. OK, yeah. We need, you need to make one of these, like for all the sizes you're going to offer. This seller doesn't have it here, but you need to have an image that says that the poster is digital and the customer will not receive it to their home. OK, I'm going to show you how I created this uh, easily. OK, so what I did is that I copy pasted the text right here. And I'm going to change this to, to Bebas because I like this font a, a lot. And just to make this uh, to capital letters. And I actually don't like the centered. I'm going to make it as it was. OK, we're going to leave it like this. Nice. Now I would highlight this and make it red. OK. And what I do is that I actually put my shop banner right here. Like. I put my banner right here, my shop banner, just to fill the space. And if my text isn't long enough, I put it on the bottom as well. This would be my design. And 
I actually don't like it. We need to create a solid color as well. I would make it like a bit more color for like this, I guess. And yeah, this is actually how I create this. You need to create more notes like this, like one for the size, like the seller we did before that you sell two by three and write all the sizes which is available and then four by five and all the sizes. Let me show you, like two by three, two by three, blah, blah, blah. Then four by five, blah, blah, blah. And then you can type something like, uh, if you want another, if you want another size, I can resize, I can resize it for you. Okay. This will not scare the customers away if they don't like your sizes. And then you can make one more note if you have any requests. Re requests. You can contact me. And you can make a guide to show them how to download their files and then write the steps that they need to follow like this. And then type something like if you can't, if you can't download them, download them, contact me and I will send them to you. Okay. Please note, this is a digital file. You will not receive a physical print. We have this one, which shows the two by three ratio and all the sizes we're offering. You need to actually make one more with a four by five ratio. And we have this one, which says, if you have any requests or questions, contact me and I'll be very happy to help you. Now, let me tell you some tips that can make your mockups even better. I'm here on Etsy and let me show you some example of good mockups. As you can see, the mockup of your listing needs to be in a square size. For example, let's take a look at this one. The photo is not originally square because the letters here are cropped off and it doesn't look as good as, for example, these ones. Now, let's see some good examples of mockups. This is a very good example of a good mockup. Your product needs to be big enough to catch attention. It needs to be close to the camera and not away from the camera to show its features even better. You can tell this is a high quality of photo and it stands out from the background. This is also a very good example of a mockup. Another thing you can do is to blur the background to make your product stand out even more. So far we have three tips. You have to make your image square. You have to place the product close to the camera so it looks big enough and not away from the camera. And the third technique is to blur the background to make your product stand out even more. This is also a very good example of a blur background and the product stands out very good in this picture. Another technique you can play with is contrast. And this isn't a perfect example, but look at the contrast between the background and the foreground. We have a dark background and a very bright product right here. And this creates a very nice contrast. This one, if it was done better, no offense to the seller. Or even this one, it has some amount of contrast. Or this one, it could be done better, but it has contrast. This is a good example of contrast. You can absolutely play with color. This is a very good listing. This is a very good thumbnail. And you can do this Amazon type of uh, photos where you shoot your product in a softbox and then with some editing, it looks like this. There is nothing else but your product on the middle. This is a good example of mockups. It's not my favorite for Etsy, but this can absolutely work. Now let me show you some bad examples of thumbnail mockups. 
so you can see the difference. This one, for example, is a bad example of a mockup. I'm sure that the seller had this mockup before Reddit changed their sizes to square. Now, if you're a seller that has been a long time on Etsy, you need to change all of your images to square. You can't really tell what this is if you don't actually read the title and click on it. As you can see, this is a vertical image, and that's why it doesn't look good in the thumbnail. Now, you can add up to 10 photos inside of your listing, and you can add one video. Let me show you what you can do with those. First of all, you need to add as many pictures as you can inside of your listing. The more photos you have, the better. Imagine yourself when you buy a product online. Would you buy a product that has only one photo, or would you buy a product that has multiple photos? I mean, personally, I would go for the product that has multiple photos because I can learn more about the product when I see multiple pictures. So having more photos of your products will definitely convince buyers to buy from you. Let's see, for example, in this listing. This seller offers a custom t-shirt. We see that they have a video with customer feedback showing multiple examples of what their t-shirts can look like. They also have an image with all the colors you can choose. Then we have a mock-up here showing that you can custom the name right here. We have another mock-up that says custom text and you can add your picture right here saying that you will not get this picture. You can personalize it. Another example of what the t-shirt looks like and also in another color. A guide that shows you what pictures will work for the t-shirt. A photo of all the colors of the t-shirts to see them in real life. Again, all the colors right here. All the sizes and all the types of products you can add your design in. And another example of the size. This is a very good listing and that's why 29 people bought this in the last 24 hours. Very good listing. We saw the physical products, now let's see some examples of digital products. As you can see here, there is a common thing that all of those listings have. Can you guess it? They all have text in the thumbnail. You need to add some sort of text in the thumbnail to help the customer understand what you actually sell. All of those listings have text inside them. That's why they all sell like crazy. Let's see what you can add in the other photos of the listing. You can absolutely create a video for digital products. Creating a video for your listing, even if it's very simple, will absolutely do the work for you, believe me. Believe me, I've seen some good results in my listings with simple videos. It's better than not having a video at all. Now, what you can add to the other photos of your listing? Because I create digital products, I like to add some information inside of my photos and let people know that they are digital files, a guide on how to print them. For example, if you sell printable posters, you can add multiple mockups of wall posters. You can add some info like, for example, let's see here. In this photo, the seller shares proof that their product is working and feedback from their customers. They're offering a gift with their product, which is a very good technique, and we're going to talk about it later in the course. They give us some info to let us know what this is. Some more info. 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 I mean, okay, this isn't necessary, uh, but okay. Now let's see examples for those who sell services. Now, as you can see, there is also this common theme as well right here. All of those thumbnails have text in them to let people know what this service is about. Let's click on this one, okay? All you need to do to provide your selfies on Etsy is to show proof that you know what you're doing. So this seller basically just shows us their portfolio. As you can see, we have the before and after their service. The people are removed right here. Again, before and after, before and after, before and after, before and after. How can you not buy from the seller? And it has one additional photo 
of showing you how to order. But this is a marketing masterclass. Look at this thumbnail, it's, it's just amazing. It stands out from everything else right here. You can tell that this isn't a square image. This is a horizontal image and it's cut off around the edges, but it's very popular now because look at this thumbnail. It catches all of the attention. Have you ever seen something like that? And the seller doesn't even have any other photos. It's just this one. If you can create a thumbnail that destroys everything around it, like this one, then you will win the game of Etsy. This is a masterpiece. This is the best example of a thumbnail I can show you. And that's why this is a bestseller. Overall, you have to have a square image. Okay. Your product needs to look big and not far from the camera. You can add a blurry background to make your product stand out. You can play with contrast. And for digital products and services, you have to add text into your thumbnails. Okay, that's it for the mockups. See you in the next lesson. It's time for the last lesson inside of lesson one. It's time to open your Etsy shop if you don't already have one. Okay, do not overthink it. Do it now, with me. Let's go. If you don't open the shop right now, then do not continue with the course. The first step is to go to Etsy and then type into the search bar 40 listings, 40 free listings or whatever. Then go to a random, let's go to this one, go to the description and you see a link right here. So basically we need to get a link from a random seller to get 40 listings for free. Okay, and they will get 40 listings for free as well. Now click on the link. And now you can open a shop. Sign in. I'm coming back. Now you should be able to see this page. Tap let's do this. I mean, let's keep this. You can answer this, but I'm going to skip it for the sake of the tutorial. And now tap start your shop. Now to be able to open your shop, you have to fill all of those details. Select your shop language, your country, and your shop currency. Okay, let's click save and continue. To be able to open a shop, you need to have a name. I don't want you to overthink this. You can literally change it later. As it says, even I changed my shop name uh, one time. Just find a name that it's not complicated and people can easily remember it. Okay, so let me think of something of the spot. Let me type Cookie Monster. And now Etsy will suggest some names for you that are not already taken. If you can find something that it doesn't have all the additional things right here, then go for it. But for the sake of the tutorial, I will go with Cookie by Thanos or um, let's go with Monster Cookie US, even though I'm not uh, from the US. And click save and continue. Now you can't open a shop if you don't create a listing first. There are two ways you can do this. If you already have uh, something that you can list right now, then wait for a bit for the tutorial later. But if you don't have something to list right now, then follow my lead. We're gonna go to add the photo and just add the random photo from your PC. Let's go with our screensaver. Now let's go and add a random title. Just add something. And once your photo is uploaded and you have a title, then you can go and tap save and continue. Oh, we have a category. We have to fill those out. I did it. I finished. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have to set the price. Let's 
set it to one dollar and let's make it digital for now to make it easier and we need to upload the file just add the random picture from your computer and now we should be able to continue okay well you have an option to add more listings if you have but we're gonna do this later now we will delete this listing we just created don't worry it won't affect your shop it will be gone in a bit okay now you need to set up how you will get paid it select your country please do not enter false information right here okay for me my country is greece okay i'm an individual and you need to fill out your legal information okay I'm not gonna show you my legal information, but after you finish with this one, next you're going to add your bag name, your IBAN, and your shift, okay, or BIC, how you say it. And then you will click save and continue. You're going to fill in your billing info, and then your shop security, which isn't anything special. And this is the end of lesson one. I'm so proud of you that you started your Etsy shop, and I'm going to see you into lesson two. Welcome to lesson 2 where we're gonna learn how to create quality listings and how to set up your store. Let's begin. The first thing we're going to learn is how to upload mockups and digital files to our listings. Next we're going to learn how to create the titles, the descriptions, the tags, how to set up the right pricing for your listings, how to set up the other listing details, how to create a logo and a banner for your shop, how to complete the other store settings, and how to create new listings after we create our first one. Let's begin by showing you how to upload mockups and digital files to your listing. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so now that you have your Etsy shop, we can either edit the listing that we just created, or you can delete it if you want. If you want to delete a listing, you tap this icon and then choose delete. Or if you want to edit your listing and not lose a free listing, then you press edit and you should be able to go through the tutorial. So you can either go and edit your listing or you can add a new listing. Okay, I'm gonna tap add a new listing. Now, this is the first thing that will pop up. Do we sell a physical item or a digital item? If you sell physical products uh, or print on demand, then choose the physical item. Or if you sell digital products or services, then choose digital files. I will choose digital files because I think most of you are interested in selling digital products. Then, who made it? Most likely, you, you will not have a member or a company, so you're going to click I did it. What is it? It, is it a finished product or a supply or tool to make things? In my opinion, this depends on the type of product that you sell. If you sell something printable, let's say a printable poster, a printable birthday card, a printable cake topper, things like that, you could add it as a finished product, but I think it's kind of a supply or a tool to make things because the buyer has to do some stuff to get the finished product. I think these types of products are a supply or a tool to make things, in my opinion. But I don't think it actually matters this month. Uh, you can choose either, either one. Now if you sell templates or something else that is editable, then I think you can add the finished product. And if you sell services, you should definitely add the finished product. I'm gonna choose for the sake of the tutorial a finished product, which is the safe answer in my opinion. When was it made? It? You will most likely choose recently, 2020 through 2024. Add production partners. I don't think you will have any production partners. Then just click continue. Okay, now this is all the things that we need to fill out. Your first listing is going to take a while to complete, but don't you worry, we will go through this together. The first thing I do when I create a new listing 
is to go and upload all of my photos. So we're going to click add photos and this is some old photos from my YouTube channel. I'm going to add all those and the video if you want. Uh, let me find, um, yeah, it will be hard to find the video right now. So just click here to add the video. Okay. It says that listings with a video get twice as many orders as listings with just photos. So videos are very important. Now under the photos, we can add digital files. Press add the file and locate your file. If you sell printable posters, you will add all the files of the posters. Uh, if you sell birthday cards, you will add the birthday card file. If you sell templates, you will create a Word or a BTF that says thank you for ordering and then add your link to your Canva template. If you sell planners, then add your planner. And if you sell services, then just add the thank you note and some instructions in the thank you note if you want. You can add up to five files and each file can be only up to 20 megabytes. So be careful with the size. If you want to reduce the size of your photos or of your files, if they are JPEG or PNG, then I highly suggest to download this program right here. It will compress your PNG and JPEG files and it does it very quickly. Let me add five of these. And as you can see right here, we have all our files. It's important to name your files. This is exactly what the customer will see when they buy from you. So it's important to name your files so it doesn't look messy. Now that our photos are uploaded, we can rearrange the order of them. Let's say I want this one to be the thumbnail because it's a square image. And you can actually adjust it. This is how it will look. I mean, it looks okay. And then you can play with the order of your photos right here. Always put the most important photos in the beginning and then your least important photos in the bottom. That was it. Now you know how to upload your mockups and how to upload digital files. See you in the next lesson. Welcome to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how to create your titles. Now, I already made a course where I show you how to create titles, descriptions, and tags. So I'm going to transition to this video where I will show you how I would list a printable cactus poster on Etsy. Nice. Now we do have three main things to fill out. We have the title. We have the description. And we have the tags. Let's start with the title. Personally, I would make a collage of keywords from other bestsellers in our niche. I would go and type our keyword, Boho Cactus Wall Art, and I would go to bestsellers like this one, and this is the title, okay? We need to collect many long tail keywords, and then we're gonna paste them to our own listing. I'm gonna take this one, right here, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste it. Okay, let's go back. I'm gonna also take this one right here and I'm gonna put it right here. I don't think we need anything else from this listing so we're gonna go back and then just find other listings and tap on it. Okay, this was, this was an ad so don't click on ads. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna go and actually take all of this. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna paste it right here. Let's go back. Let's go here. Um, I don't think we need any of this. Let's go back and find anything else. Let's go to this one. I don't think, like, let's go and take modern wall art. Let's go back, paste it right here.
Let's take these ones. Living room wall art. Let's take that. Let's paste it right here. Let's take Boho Printable, I guess. Let's paste it here. Let's go back. I'm gonna take this keyword. Southwestern decor. And I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna take this keyword. And I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, I think we have enough. So let's go here and let's fix it. I'm going to create some space and I'm going to go with, going to take this, paste it here, cactus poster. Then I would take desert wall art. I'm going to put it right here. Then I would take this one, watercolor cactus. Actually, no, I would take botanical and I would put it right here. I would do that and then put desert. Then southwestern decor right here. I'm gonna delete that. Then we're gonna go and take, we're gonna go and type boho cactus wall art, which is our keyword. Actually, no, I'm gonna delete that. Painting. Modern art. Okay. Then living room. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. Wait. Wait, how is this one hundred and seventy seven? What? I'm gonna. What? How? I don't know how, but and why, but it didn't let me to do that. So I made another one, like which is like pretty much the same. I just put, I just added the code right here. So. What I've done here is that I took multiple keywords from my other bestsellers and I created new keywords actually. So let's read it. 
Cactus Poster, Poster Botanical, Botanical Wall Art, Wall Art Watercolor, Watercolor Cactus, Cactus Desert, Desert Southwestern Decor, Decor Boho, Boho Cactus, Cactus Painting, Painting Modern, Modern Minimal Art, Art Living Room, and then Living Room Decor. What I've done is that each keyword is connected to the previous and the afterwards keyword. Okay, so this is what you need to do to create multiple keywords to your title. I think this is a very good title. And now it's time for the description. What I would do for the description is that I would go to best sellers, but not in our niche. I would type printable wall art, wall art. I would go to filters, then click digital downloads. And then also I would click star seller and show results. Then I would go right here to the link and change the word star with the word best and I would click enter. This will show us the best sellers. Okay, let's go to this one. Let's go here. I don't really like this description to be honest with you. Let's go to another one. Let me actually clear some of this up. We don't need this one. I'm actually looking not to go to a set, but to find a single Okay, so I think this is actually really okay. I'm gonna take this part right here and I would copy and paste this to our own. Okay, I would change this a bit. I would make it like that. Read it first and think they're okay. Okay, I would make it like that. And I would go back again. Let's see what else we can take from here. We can take this one also. Copy this. And go and paste it. Let's change it a bit. Okay, right here. We can actually go to the listing we took our inspiration earlier for the sizes. Then we can go and copy and paste this part right here to our own. Okay, so now I will change this a bit. I will type your download includes two JPEG JPEG files. Then I would go and leave that and that. I would erase that. I leave inches only for the sake of the tutorial. I would delete that. Also that. Then I would go and delete that also, this also, and yeah, let's make it like that. And this is it. Let's type also sizes. Right now, okay, very good. And now we need to include some keywords into our description. I'm gonna go back to this one. I think this is a really good. And I'm gonna copy it again. 
and I'm gonna change the keywords to match our niche. I'm gonna type this Southwestern inspired boho cactus wall art cactus water opa water color wall art print is one of our most popular is one of our most popular des desert designs and for a good reason it brings minimalism it brings modern minimalism warmth and nature into your home decor okay yeah 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 to re to decorate decorate your home let's change that and this also and this also and this also this all and i think this is actually not that bad oops yeah the description is done okay let's move to the tags we can actually use Allura to find keywords. So I did go to research and then keyword, and then I typed Boho Cactus Wall Art. As you can see right here, we have, we have many keywords that we can actually put in our tags. Okay, let's take this one. Let's take this one, this one, this one. Then I'm gonna copy them and then I'm gonna go to my DAGs and paste them. Okay, let's add them. Let's go right here and take some keywords from the title. And I'm gonna paste those here. I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna take this one as well. Oops, paste it right here. I'm gonna take this one, watercolor cactus, paste it right here. I think this is okay. Let's go back to Allura. And you can actually try Allura for free if you click the link in the description. And we can actually see the top listings with this keyword. Okay, we can actually go to them, like this one. Let's tap on it. And we can actually see what tags they used. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take anything from here because we have them. Let's go to the second page. Let's see this one. I mean, we could take that, Boho Nursery. I'm gonna take this one. And this one, I guess. Copy. I'm gonna paste it here. And we have two more to fill out. Let's go and find another one. Let's go to this one. We can take this one, I guess, and put it right here. Let's paste it. And let's see if we can take anything else from our title. Let's take this one as well. Okay, let's copy it. 
and paste it right here. So this is our tags. I think they're okay. Welcome to the next lesson. It's time for you to learn how to set up your prices. To set up your price, you will need to come to the price and inventory. You, as you can see, you can scroll down and you will find it right here. Now, to set up your price, you will need to type your number right here. Let's say I want to sell something for $10. And there is actually a new feature right here where you have your estimated profit, which is very nice. All right. It does have mine in euros because I'm in Europe. So just bear with me. Imagine this is dollars. Okay, and the quantity. If you sell digital products, you will set this to 9999999. If you sell print on demand, just set it right here as well. And if you sell physical products, just type the number of your inventory. You might have only 10. But how to find the right price for your product? Let's say we sell cookie jars. I will go on Etsy. I will type cookie jars into the sales bar. And then I will go to the best sellers. Let's go to the best sellers. Like I sold you earlier. Let's go star seller. And then change the word star with the word best and type enter. And now we have all of our best sellers right here. Now I want to go back a bit. Let's imagine that those are best sellers because we have them side by side. This is a very similar cookie jar. It's the exact same cookie jar basically. And these are both personalized cookie jars. One of them is $53 with free shipping. And the other one is $45.99. Now, those are sellers with many, many, many hundreds of thousands of sales. And this one also has multiple thousands of sales because they have thousands of reviews. As a new seller with no reviews to your shop, there is only one way you can compete with those sellers. And that is the price. I highly recommend you, since you are a beginner, I highly recommend you to set up your prices lower than your competitors. If you sell physical products, I highly recommend you to enable free shipping because when a buyer goes to the filters, they can sort out free shipping. And if they click the free shipping icon, then if you don't have free shipping, your listing will disappear forever. So I highly recommend to set free shipping for your products. And now this one is $45.99, but let's see how... Okay, because I'm from Greece, it says $60 to ship, which is crazy. I'm leaving immediately. In my opinion, you will need to set up a free shipping and lower the price down. Okay, to the point that you still are able to make some profit but not as good profit let's say for example this seller makes ten dollars profit from this you will need to lower the price by five six seven dollars and make for example three dollars profit or four dollars profit to be able to get some sales first okay but why you should do this it will help you get more sales it will help you get more reviews and people will trust you more in the future after a certain point where you have some sales coming through, you can gradually increase your price wherever you want. But since you are a new Etsy seller, I highly recommend you to set this to $45, $44, $246.99. Just be patient and make some small amount of profit at the start. And when you get the sales, because you will get sales, you will increase it to $49, then $50. You will still be lower and after you get many sales, then you can even set it higher than the seller if you got many positive reviews. So let me change this to 46 and 99. Send a dollar, it's euros, let's say it's dollars. And quantity, let's say I have 10 of them. So this is how you should set up your price. This example that I show you is the same thing for digital products, for print on demand, for services, for everything. Okay, see you in the next lesson. Welcome to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how to fill out the listing details. Let's begin. Now there are a lot of things that we can fill out here. The first thing that we can do is to add personalization. We can click add personalization and we can type something important for the customers to see before they buy their product. 
For example, and see here, this is automated. It says see item description for details. Let's say for the cactus example, this is a digital file. This is an optional feature. You don't actually have to add personalization, but if you want to add an instruction for your buyers, then you can definitely add something here. Next, we have the price that I told you earlier. And now we have variations. Now, if you sell digital items, then this will be unavailable for you. If you sell physical products and print on demand, then here you will have options to add colors, sizes, and stuff like that. Okay, now we have the details of the listing. We can actually change this to physical item if you want and click apply. Yes, apply. And we can actually see the variations later. Let's add the category. Let's say I'm selling cookie jars again. I'm gonna say jars, for example. Jars and containers. This is the category that cookie jars belong. Now, we can actually add variations. Now that we have a category for physical products. As you can see, we can set up primary color. Let's say it's white, like the other ones before. and click done. We can add another variation, let's say secondary color. Let's put black and click done. Let's click apply. Let's move to details. Now that we have our category, we can set up attributes. We have it right here. The secondary color, we added it here. You can choose the sustainability, it's plastic free. For the occasion, let's say it doesn't really have an occasion, but let's say birthday. It doesn't really relate to a holiday, so I'm gonna leave it like that. The tags, okay. The materials, you can add, I don't know, glass. Okay, you can add any materials that you want right here. And the shipping, as I said earlier, create new. You can, you can choose free shipping as I told you earlier, or you can either choose the fixed price. I'm leaning towards free shipping. Okay. Then we have returns and exchanges. You can apply this policy that is recommended right here. We have shop sections. We, we will see that in the next lessons and, and feature this listing, we will see it later. We have the renewal options where you can set it to automatic. It means that every four months, its listing will be automatically renewed. I will keep this in manual and you can renew the listing if you want by yourself. If you leave it at automatic, then it will charge you 20 cents each time. Let me change it again to digital files to see if we have something different. Show you. As you can see for digital files, the shipping is very simple. Buyers will download your uploaded files immediately after their purchase. For returns and exchanges, buyer can contact seller about any issues with the order. Okay, and that's it for the listing details. Now it's time for you to click publish. It says that it will charge you 20 cents, but don't worry, you have the 40 free listings. Click publish. And now you have your first listing. Now it's time you want to create a new listing. Don't click this icon again. Now, if you want to create a similar listing, let's say you sell printable posters and your new listing will be a printable poster as well, then do not click add the listing because it will force you to create all the details again from scratch. Just go ahead to this icon and type copy. Now you can create your listing. You can change the title. Let's say this is our title. You can remove the photos and add new ones. Let's say I want this one. You can add new digital files. For example, I want this one. You can change the description. You can change everything basically, the, the price. And when you're done, click publish copy with changes. And click publish again. And now if we reload the page, we should have a new listing, which we created very quickly. 
and now it's time you want to create a new listing, you will go right here and click the copy option. And if you want to edit a listing, if you want to change something, then click edit. Let's say you want to add a new photo, you can add it, you can change the title, for example. You can change everything that you want, and then when it's done, click publish changes, and now, if we click it here, we can see that our changes are applied. So now you know everything about creating new listings, and now it's time for you to fully set up your store. See you in the next lesson. It's time to create your logo. Now I am a Photoshop user, but since not everyone have Adobe Photoshop installed on their computer, I'm going to use Canva, which is free. Now to create our logo, we need to go to Canva and then click create a design. Next, you're going to select custom size. Let's say 2000 by 2000 pixels and hit create new design. Now, I don't want you to overcomplicate this process because your logo doesn't have to be perfect. You can create one now and if you are successful later and you want to change it, then you can hire someone to create a good logo for you. But let's create one very quickly. I do prefer a simple logo. As you can see here, we have some templates and we can choose one of these, edit them and type our shop name. Now you have to keep in mind to select templates like these ones and not these ones that have the pro icon right here because these ones are free and these ones are not. So I'm gonna type logo into the search bar and as you can see right here we have many free options to choose from. I've seen many people use logos like these on Etsy and like these but we want something simple and something that is easily read from a distance. I will choose this one for example. In my opinion, simpler logos are just better. I think this is very okay for Etsy. And if you want to add something, let's say a cookie, I don't know. Let's go to elements and then type cookie. Hello. Let's type see all. You can use this one, for example. And I don't know, just replace all the O's. And this one. This one and just go oh. and make some duplicates. And
I know that this doesn't look good, but you can do something like that, I guess. Let's say this is our logo, okay? You can experiment with this one, just don't spend hours on it in my opinion. It doesn't really actually matter a lot. You can, you can absolutely fix it later if you want. Just make something quickly, then go to the share button and click download. It doesn't matter if you want to choose JPEG or PNG, let's choose PNG. And click download. And now you have it on your computer. Now all we have to do is to go to your shop, settings, and then info and appearance. You go to your shop icon, then click upload your shop icon, choose a file, then go to your downloads, and yeah. And yeah, you have now wait. Go to your shop icon, then click upload your shop icon. Choose a file and then click your file. And now you have this beautiful logo and click save. Looks good. Nice. Now if you go to your Etsy shop, let's tap here. Now, as you can see, you have your logo. Now, this is too small, in my opinion. We have to make it bigger. So, just go back. Choose everything, go over it. And let's just make it bigger. Click share, then download, and download it again. Go to your Etsy shop again, settings, info appearance, then upload your icon, choose file, and choose the new one that we created. Save, looks good. I think now it should be better. Go to our store again. A lot better right now. We could have made this even bigger, but okay. I know that it doesn't look good, but you can do a better job than me. And there you have it, you have your logo. Now, it's time to create our banner. As you can see right here, this is a banner that I would suggest you to create. Just type your shop name, then write what you are selling, and add some text right here, your, your shop saying or something like that. Then I would highly suggest to put some of your products into your banner. You can also do other things like, let's say you can add a discount right here. You can basically promote everything that you want on your banner and use this space that you have here carefully. Now, if you have a store where you sell printable posters like this one, for example, then I would highly suggest you to create something like this. Just take three of your mockups and place them right here and write some text right here at a discount say that you sell printable posters or something like that, digital downloads, and add whatever you want right here. You can add your logo to your banner. So basically just get creative again. I think your logo is less important than your banner. So now I would suggest that you should spend more time into making your banner. Your shop's banner is like the storefront of your business. This is the first thing customers see when they go to your shop. Go to your editing software, set the dimensions that Edge is asking and just take mockups from your best products, put them in there, write your shop name and add something you need to promote or a slogan and you are ready to go. Make sure the colors and the fonts represent your store and you are ready to go. With physical products you will need to remove the backgrounds from your product and then make something out of it. Another thing that you can do is to take a photo with many of your products 
then you can put the photo right here on this part, on one side your text and on the other side your products and it will look much cleaner than the other way. The other thing that you can do is to go to other people and see what banners they have. Now those are very good banners in my opinion. As you can see the seller did the same thing I told you earlier. Just take a photo of all the things you want to show and then add your decks to the other side. This is way easier to create. These are very good banners. So that's it for making a banner. Just follow this approach right here if you have physical products and I will see you in the next lesson. These 10 settings will massively improve your Etsy shop in under 10 minutes. Most of them are located on the settings tab in the shop manager. Tap on settings and then choose info and appearance. Setting number one, your shop name. Your shop is the first impression customers get when they find your product in the search results and it's crucial for brand recognition. Please don't name your shop like your own social media. In my opinion, it's better to name your shop something relatable to the products or the niche of your shop. Don't get me wrong, you can succeed on Etsy with a random name. However, a confusing or a generic name might make it difficult for customers to remember you. And we want customers to remember us because it will be easier for them to buy again from us and refer other people to our shop. A small and relatable name will do the job. Now go again to info and appearance. Your shop title should be very simple and informative. Mine is Sports Printables. It explains my niche and the type of products I'm selling. Do the same with yours. Setting number 2. Your shop announcement. Let's go down. Let me tell you something. No one will give a fuck about your announcement. So having the 300 words of nonsense you got from ChatGPT isn't doing you many favors. This makes you look like an amateur. Here's how to do it the right way. Just make it one or two sentences long. When someone is on your shop page, it shouldn't show them to click show more, because no one will click it. You need to be concise. It's a great space to communicate things like offers, rewards, shipping times, or any other updates. Leaving it blank or not utilizing it to its full potential can create a missed opportunity to engage with your customers. Here's what mine looks like. If you give us a 5 star review, you will receive a gift. Upload your photo of the finished product and it might end up on the shop's wall of fame in the about section. Two sentences, but look how much value I'm providing. Fill yours in a similar way. Setting number 3. You need to create a message for your buyers. It's right under the shop announcement. The message to buyers is an automatic note that is included in the order confirmation email. If you don't fill this out, you will miss the opportunity to express your gratitude, share important information related to the product, or even encourage customers to leave a review. Here's what I wrote in mine. Thank you so much for ordering. If you can download the file, contact me on Etsy. If you give us a 5 star review, you will receive some gifts. Tell about us to your friends so they can get rewarded as well. I'm including gratitude, important information if they can't access the product, persuading them to leave a review and telling them to become referrals. I didn't have the referral part, I just added it because I realized the power of referrals. Adjust this to your products and make it short to ensure that they will actually read it. Don't forget to save your changes. Setting number 4. The About section. The About section is a way to let customers connect with a person behind the shop, fill out some things about yourself and then go to the Story section. This is the only part I will let you use ChatGPT to fill out. I made mine with AI as well, because I don't think the shop story is really important. Fill those out and let's go to the good stuff. If we scroll down, we can see that we have the option to add a video and 5 photos. This is the wall of fame I talked about in the announcement section. Personally, I get the best photos of the reviews I get, either from the review section or from messages because some people send me pictures and they don't leave a review sometimes. I pick the best 5 and I upload them here. This shows that I have a connection with customers, it shows that customers can get rewarded by having their pictures on my shop wall and it helps new customers to see what the finished product will look like. It's so powerful in my opinion. To be honest with you, I don't have a video, but I could make a video showing all the pictures I got from customers. 
This is how I use this section. You can do anything that you want. Just don't ignore this section because it's really powerful. Setting number 5. Adding sections to your shop. Let's get out of settings. Tap on listings. Then go to the right side of your screen where it says sections and click manage. Sections allow you to categorize your products, making it easier for customers to navigate through your shop. Neglecting this setting will make your shop look very messy and make it difficult for customers to find what they're looking for. So click add a section, give a title and do this until everything is categorized. I believe Etsy allows up to 10 sections. Now go to your listings. Select the ones you want to add to one section, tap on this icon and then change section and select the desired section. Do this until all of your listings belong to a section. Setting number 6. Featured listings. Etsy allows us to showcase specific listings in our shop. If you don't do this, you're missing out on an opportunity to highlight your best sellers. But I don't use it for my best sellers. I use this for custom listings. I didn't mention this in another video, but I have some listings where the customers can choose any 6 designs they like from my shop and make a custom set. I have one more that does the same, but with 3 designs. This is how I use this setting. To add the feature listing, all you have to do is to tap on the star icon on a listing. You can choose up to 4 listings, and if you tap manage, you can rearrange the order of them. For the last 4 settings, we will need to go to our shop page and click edit shop. Setting number 7. Your logo. Your shop's logo is a crucial element for brand recognition. Not having a logo or using a low quality one can impact the professionalism of your shop. This sounds like a lot of work, but I'm going to show you that you can make one in seconds. Just take the name of your shop, write it in Canva or Photoshop with a font that you like and export it. This is the style of logo I have in my shop to this day. Setting number 8. Your banner. Your shop's banner is like the storefront of your business. This is the first thing customers see when they go to your shop. Go to your editing software, set the dimensions that Etsy is asking and just take mockups from your best products, put them in there, write your shop name and add something you need to promote or a slogan and you are ready to go. Make sure the colors and the fonts represent your store and you are ready to go. Setting number 9. Add a photo of yourself and your real name. Adding a photo of yourself and using your real name can help build trust with customers. Don't be shy. Trust me, no one cares if you think you're ugly and your physical appearance won't scare the customers away. Look how small this circle is. People barely can see your face. Add a real photo of yourself and add your real name. People want to talk to real people. They will trust you more and they will leave a good review for you. Speaking of this, I'm planning to show my face soon and I will announce something cool in the upcoming months. And finally, setting number 10. FAQ – Frequently Asked Questions A well-curated FAQ can save you and your customers time. If your FAQ isn't completed or it doesn't address common questions, customers will reach out to you directly more often, meaning you need to work longer. Take a look at my FAQ. I sell mainly printable posters. Will I receive a poster to my house? No, you will not receive a physical poster. These are digital posters. When you order, you will receive a JPEG ready for you to print at home or in a print shop. Why I should buy a digital poster? Because you can have a finished poster way faster and cheaper. The printing is up to you, so you don't have to wait for shipping. You will receive the digital file instantly after the purchase. Is it true that if I give a 5-star review, I will be rewarded? Yes. You'll get way more value than you paid for this way. Are the designs high quality? High is a small word compared to the quality of our designs. 8K quality. Can I get other sizes if I don't want the recommended one? Of course. Just make sure to contact me before you order. Adjust this to your products that you sell. If you sell physical products, you can add a question like when will I receive my product and answer that quickly. Click add an FAQ. Tap here and then choose custom. Type your question here and your answer here. Click save and you're ready. Congratulations, your shop looks professional now. But if you want to dominate on Etsy, click this video next.
Welcome to lesson 3, Marketing and Promotion. In the third lesson, we're going to talk about Etsy SEO, we're going to talk about social media, we're going to talk about Etsy ads, email marketing, word of mouth, and how to set daily sales and discounts to your store. Let's begin with Etsy SEO. SEO means Search Engine Optimization. In simpler words, SEO affects how high you will rank up on the Etsy results. So if you have good SEO, then your products will be in the first pages of the results. If you have bad SEO, then you're not going to make any sales because the customers will not be able to see your products. There will be in the last pages of the SEO and realistically no one will go to the last pages to see your product. Now, what makes a good SEO? Good SEO is mainly your title, your descriptions and your tags. You will need to have a good title, a good description and relevant tags to your listing. So basically if you have good titles, descriptions and tags, then people are going to see your products and you will make more sales. In my experience to get good at SEO, you will need to create many listings to be able to master the skill. Also the more listings you have in your shop, the better the chances of having good SEO. And eventually, after a point where you have created hundreds of listings, your skills on SEO will become better and better, and you will get many visits to your store, which means more sales. So basically, the more listings you have, the better the chances of someone buying from you. And this will lead to more customers over time. So basically, just get better at creating listings, and you will get more customers. As they say, practice makes perfect. So you need to practice a lot at crafting listings, and the more listings you will have, the more chances you have that your listings will rank up to the first results of the pages. That's it, my advice is to create as many listings as you can, and believe me, you will see results. In my first shop, I remember that I had 6 or 7 listings to my shop, and for 2 months I didn't get any sales. Then, eventually, I got my first sale, and then because I got my first sale, I decided to create more listings, and that led to me making $1,000 per month. So basically by having good SEO, you can absolutely get thousands of sales. And the best thing is that you can do it without even promoting them to social media or whatever else. This was Etsy SEO. See you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about social media. See you there. Welcome to the next lesson where we're going to talk about social media. Promoting your products to social media is a very good way to increase your sales. And here are the best social media for Etsy. My favorite one is Pinterest. Remember when I told you earlier that Etsy has mainly a female audience? Well, we want a social media that has mainly female audience as well. And Pinterest is that social media. Now let me show you how to promote your products on Pinterest. The first thing that you're going to do is to go to Pinterest and then you're going to create a new account. You're not going to select create a new personal account. We're going to create a free business account. Okay, and tap create. And now create your account. Okay, now your profile should look like this. You can go to edit profile. You can either add the picture of yourself or you can either add the logo of your store. And let's choose our photo. and choose a logo. As you can see right here. Now we can say cookie monster You can tell something about your shop. We sell cookie jars will sell the best. We sell the best cookie jars. I mean, add your pronouns if you want. You will add your shop's link. Go to your dashboard and then copy this link. Okay. And let's paste it here. Your username, you sh I mean, I won't change it right now, but pick something related to your shop and click save. Okay. 
Now, if you go to our profile, you should see your new photo, your new name, your store. Click on it. Yep, it goes to my store. Very good. Let's close this one. And now it's time to promote our products. There are two ways you can do this. The first way is to go to your profile and then click the plus icon right here and create a pin. Yay! Now you can choose a mockup or multiple mockups of your product. Let's choose something. Um, let's say, let's just say this is our mockup. You can either go ahead and copy the title of your listing, or you can write something simpler. Uh, let's say cookie jar. Cookie jars, for example. You can copy and paste the description right here. You can go ahead and go to your shop. Let's say it's this one. And copy this link right here. Copy. And paste it right here. Okay, choose a board. We don't have a board yet, but we're going to create one. I'm going to show you how you do it. And you can add tags, cookies, for example, cookie jars. Add as many tags as you want, and then click publish. And now, if we go to our profile, and go to create it, then you should see this one. And this is what the Pinterest users will see. And if they like your product, they're gonna click to this link, which leads them to buy your product. Now, the second way to post your products on Pinterest is this one. We're gonna go to save again to the profile and then click the plus icon again. And now we're going to choose a board. Now you're going to create a board that is related to your products. For example, I'm gonna type cookie jars and I'm gonna hit create. Now, Pinterest will show you some pins to add to your new board. Now I want you to add 30 to 40 pins to your board. Just go right here and click save. You saved one. Also add videos as well. It's a bit laggy today, I'm so sorry. I don't have a very good internet connection in this room. Now I'm not counting, but those should be enough. Let's click on this one as well. Doesn't let me. And click done when you're ready. Okay, we have 58 pins. Okay, it's okay. Now, if you go to our profile again, you should have a board right here. Okay, now I want you to go to the related product on your store. Go to your store. And let's say this is a cookie jar. Now, you're going to see that we have an option to save it to Pinterest. You're going to click that, and now you will sign into your Pinterest. Let me do that real quick. And now, once you're connected, you're going to see all of your boards right here, and you're going to select the board you want to save it in. Let's click Save. And now it's saved to your board. And let me verify that this worked. Let's go to our cookie jars. And let's refresh it. And now we have 59 pins. 
and we can add our other pin we just created to this board right here. Let's go to this one and add it to the cookie jars and save. Now if we go back, we have 60 pins right now and we have our products right here amongst the other products. But why did we create this board and then we added all the other things right here? This is going to push our products to people who like those products as well and we're going to get some traction to those posts. Okay, and when you get some visits to your posts then you will have an analytics tab right here where you can check how your posts are doing. Now don't expect Pinterest to get you traction uh, fast. This is for the long run. Pinterest is like a snowball and your posts will get traction over time. We're done with Pinterest. Apart from Pinterest, which is my favorite, you can absolutely do Instagram and TikTok. To Instagram, you can either create videos of your products and post them there, or you can create just photos of your products and post them to Instagram. It will be hard to get some following to your Instagram account, but you can use some hashtags under your post and pray that it will go viral. Now, let's say if you create videos for Instagram, then you can absolutely just post them to TikTok as well. Now, if you only create videos for TikTok, then create an Instagram account as well and upload your videos as well to Instagram. If you do videos, you can upload them to YouTube Shorts as well. And my opinion, you can absolutely try Twitter or X. Overall, just find a social media app that it's good for you. It's a social media app that you use and that you love, and it will make the process for you easier. Now, I didn't mention it earlier for Pinterest. You can create as many boards as you like. Let's say in my example, if I sell cookie jars, and then I sell also bowls. I can create a new board about bowls and then add my bowls to this board. And the final thing that you can do is to reach out to influencers. You can either send them your product as a gift and they can do a post for you trying the product for free, or you can either pay someone and promote your product. In my opinion, just create your own account in one of those platforms and then create some content. And if this doesn't work, then you can absolutely pay for ads to Instagram or Facebook or whatever else. That's it for social media. I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to this lesson where I'm going to show you how you can use Etsy ads. Let's begin. What are Etsy ads? Etsy ads is a form of advertising inside of the Etsy marketplace. Now, should you try them? Well, let me show you first. To access the Etsy ads, you will need to go to your shop manager and then type marketing and then choose Etsy ads. And as you can see right here, you can get started. You can basically reach more buyers with Etsy ads, which is true. Etsy ads make your items more prominent in the Etsy search, on category pages, even on other listing pages. You're in control of which listings you promote and how much you spend, which is absolutely correct. Now, what will Etsy ads actually do to your products? Let me show you. If you go to a random search on Etsy, you can see that the first row of the results are ads. As you can see, ad by Etsy seller, ad by Etsy seller, ad by Etsy seller, ad by Etsy seller. In the second row are people who didn't pay for ads. Also in the third row, no ads. In the fourth row, we have ads again. In the fifth row, no ads. In the sixth row, no ads. As you can see, in the seventh row, we have ads again. Every three rows, we have ads. So if you pay for ads, you will have a high chance of ranking up in the first or second page of the results in your niche. Okay, which is very good. Now, if someone clicks on your ad, then you will pay Etsy a certain amount of cents. Okay. And this is the bad part because it's not guaranteed that Etsy ads will be profitable for you. It's not like you are spending your ad money when someone orders from you. You spend your ad money when someone clicks on your listing. And if they don't buy from you, then you will lose money. To be able to start with Etsy ads, tap get started. Now, 
Now, you can tell, let's say, your goal of your shop to increase visibility and awareness. Is it to drive orders or them? Is it to promote specific items? Take my sales up a notch. Maximize my exposure to help compete with guest similar shops. I would choose take my sales up a notch or drive orders short term. Okay, let's, t- let's choose take my sales up a notch and click submit. Now you can set your daily budget. The good thing is that you can control how much you spend every day. If you want to spend, let's say, $1, then Etsy will promote your products until you pay $1 to them. And then it will stop promoting your product and it will begin again tomorrow promoting your product. And then when you spend your dollar, it will stop again and start again tomorrow. Now, you can choose up to $25 per day. The more dollars you pay per day, the more traffic you will get to your products. You don't have to choose $1, $5 or $25. You can enter your own amount if you want. Let's say if you want to spend $4 per day, you can do that. If you want to spend $10, you can do that. You can spend up to $25 per day. A highly daily budget means we can show your listings more often in high visibility places on Etsy. Now I'm not gonna do it because this is not my shop. The next step is to choose if you want to advertise all of your listings or certain listings of yours. Should you advertise all of your listings or some of them? Now in my experience, when I chose to promote all of my listings, I didn't make any sales, but you can choose to advertise your best sellers to increase even more their sales. Should you actually try Etsy ads? In my opinion, I wouldn't get started with Etsy ads at this point because you are a beginner, time to practice your SEO, your mockups, to increase your conversion rate. And if you are a beginner, just try to upload more listings to Etsy until you get some organic traffic. And then if you want to get even more traffic, then absolutely buy Etsy ads if you want. Now, if, now in my opinion, if you sell digital products, which are mainly cheap, then using Etsy ads will not make you so much profit. If you sell physical products or your services, then I would recommend starting an Etsy ads campaign because you can make more profit with them because your products will be more expensive. So overall, I recommend that you get good at making listings and then you can choose if you want to spend your dollars to Etsy ads. There are many successful shops which use Etsy ads, so it's not like they don't work. But there are many shops that lose money because their products are not as good yet and they end up losing money. Personally, because I sell cheap physical products, I don't use Etsy ads. I get a fair amount of organic traffic because I have hundreds of listings and I reach the point where I'm not a beginner, I know what I'm doing and I know what's working. It's your choice at the end of the day. I would recommend taking my advice and wait a bit longer. It will suck at first because you're not going to get a lot of traffic and you're not going to make a lot of sales at the start, and you're not going to make a lot of money at the start. But believe me, many of the successful stores that you see now on Etsy start like that. And if you are confident that your product is amazing, your SEO is very good, then you can try Etsy ads and see if they work for you. If you don't make any sales from Etsy ads, then probably your products are not as good yet. Then probably you need to practice to create better mockups and SEO and overall providing better products to Etsy. It's your choice, and I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to the next lesson, where I'm going to talk about email marketing. Let's begin. Unfortunately, the method I was using for email marketing doesn't work anymore. Let me explain why. Now, I was using Allura because it has marketing campaigns, but if you go to campaigns and then you can see that I can't start a campaign because Etsy now doesn't allow access to emails or third-party integrations. Etsy has announced that they will stop sharing buyers' email addresses with certain third-party integrations, including Allura. So unfortunately, I can show you my method I used to use for email marketing because it's no longer available. So I guess see you in the next lesson. (laughs) Welcome to the next lesson, where we're going to talk about word of mouth. Now, what is word of mouth? Word of mouth is basically when a customer buys from your shop and then they recommend or tell about your shop to other people. And word of mouth is the best free advertisement. Number one, because it's free. And number two, because other people do it for you. 
This is the best thing that can happen to your shop. This is the best free advertisement. And you can achieve this when the customers are so satisfied with your products or your services that they even tell other people about them. So to achieve the phenomenon of word of mouth, you will need to give as much value as you can to your customers. And we're going to talk about it more in the fourth lesson. So be patient a bit. And this is the word of mouth. I will see you in the next lesson where I'm going to show you how to set daily sales and discounts to your store. Welcome to the last lesson of part 3, where I'm going to show you how to set daily sales and discounts to your store. Let me show you how to do them. But before I show you, I want you to take a closer look at this page. Can you see it? Most of those listings have a sale on them. This one has a sale, this one has a sale, it has a sale. It has a sale, 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 this one doesn't, sale, 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 there are sales everywhere. So if the best sellers are doing this on Etsy, then they probably figure out something. Let's say those were the same product. Let's say also the price was the same. It was in both $30. Now, would you buy this one that is $30? Or would you buy this one that is $30 and it was $44 in the beginning? Now, most of the people would buy the listing with a discount. Okay, but why? Let me click on it. Because it has a sale for a limited time. So by just having a sale, you will stand out from people who don't have sales to their listings. And on top of that, you will give a limited time to your buyers to purchase your product. People will not want to miss this offer, so they're going to buy it now. Because this product might have a 30% off tomorrow, not a 16% off. People don't want to miss offers like that. I'm going to show you how to use this strategy on your shop. Now go to your shop manager and then type marketing. And then you're going to click sales and discounts. Okay. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is to run a sale on our products. Let's click run a sale. First of all, we have the discount amount. The most popular thing is to set the percentage off and here you can choose the percentage you want to offer. If you don't like any of those, you can set a custom and just type, for example, 60% off. You can choose the countries that will have a sale. I set it to everywhere. You can set the order minimum. I set it to none. And now the most important thing, the sale duration. Sales can be set to run up to 30 days. Now, I want you to set daily sales, which means that we can set a sale for today. Let me choose the today's date. And then it will end today. Okay. You don't have to fill this out. And you have to give a sale name. I usually set it to the percentage and then... I put off, 60% off, and then we click continue. Now you can select if you want the sale to affect all of your listings, or if you want to select some of your listings. I'm always putting all of listings. And go review and confirm. As you can see, we have a discount for 60% off, on their minimum none, the duration is today, it starts today, and it ends today, the whole shop, and we have a 60% of the name and terms none. And go ahead and confirm and create a sale. Now our sale is live. Let's click done. And now if I go to my Etsy shop, we can see that we have a daily sale. As you can see, we had our price 258 euros or dollars, okay? Now, one thing you can do is to go to your listings. A. And then edit your listing. Go to the price. Let's say if you want $58. Let's, ah, oh, I had it to $46. Okay. Let's say that I want my listing to have a sale, but I still want to make $46. Then 
I could raise my price until I make $46 with a discount. Okay, so let me set it to $70 and public changes. And then if I go to my shop and I refresh it, then now we have $34. I'm bored to do the math, but you can figure this out for your listings. And now the final thing I do is to go to marketing again, sale and discounts, and then tap run a sale again, and then I will do the next day. Always, always choose a different percentage from the previous day. So today we have 60% off, tomorrow I might want to set it to 35% off. Choose it for tomorrow, and it ends tomorrow. Okay, let's type 35% off and click continue. All of my listings and confirm and create a sale. Now, as you can see, we have a sale scheduled for the April of 6 and it ends the same day. Okay, I do this for all the days of the month in one sitting. It takes like five minutes to create. Okay, let's do one more. 7, 7 a different percentage of the previous day. Let's put it at 25%. 25% off. Click continue. Review, continue, confirm. Yeah, done. Now we have another sale scheduled. Now you will need to increase your price a bit and then figure out what percentages you want to offer to people and then set it to a range of percentages that don't affect your price a lot. For me, for example, I set mine to 25% off and 30% off, but I don't want it to be like that all the time. I might set a 35% off here and there, then a 40% off here and there, then a 45%, and even a 50%, and I might do a 20% off, just to show that it's not every day that I have a good sale. What you need to do is to set all of the days of the month and choose a different percentage from the previous day and I promise you this will drive up your sales. Okay. Now, the other thing that you can do is to create a promo code. You can set the percentage. Let's say I'm offering 30% off. And uh, you can set let's say from let's set it one week for example from saturday to saturday and let's choose save 30 okay and click continue to all of my listings and create a confirmer code and you can have the coupon right here if you want to copy it and send it to someone and then yeah, you can do it. Also. Okay. Also, you can do it for number of items. Now you want to set something like buy three and get one more. Or buy three and get 40% off. Or whatever. You can choose right here three. Then you can choose a percentage. For example, let's say... Uh, or you can either choose a free standard shipping, a fixed amount of, or a percentage of. Let's say I want to offer my people $10. Let's say I want to offer people $10 off if they buy three items from my store. And you don't actually have to set a date if you want. And you will add the custom promo code. Let's say I want to type save 10 dollars and and you can take this code and then you can edit your banner and place it inside and say buy three items save ten dollars and leave the custom code right here so using this strategy will definitely make you more sales okay and review and coffee oh no we have to to choose no end date and it doesn't allow dollars. Let's type dollars. For example. And review and confirm. 
A and create promo code. That's it. And the last thing that you can do is this email marketing thing that Etsy has. You can set up a thank you note to bring customers back and it will send an offer to a buyer after their order ships to thank them for their business. Okay. You can set up an abandoned cart to remind shoppers to check out, send an offer when someone leaves an item from your shop in their cart, and, and you can set up a favorited item, then favorites to orders, send an offer when someone favorites one of your items. Those are very powerful, and let's set them up. Okay, you can offer a percentage off to the thank you note. Let's add, it's for people to uh, come back from you. Let's set up a 30% off. And you can just leave it like that. Thank you. Okay, you can set up the unbuttoned cart. When someone removes your product out of their cart, we can set up a higher amount, let's say 35% off, and then come back. Hey, and then the favorite item, send an offer when someone favorites one of your items. We can set it up to 30, I guess. And let's type your fave. I'm just using the examples that Etsy says and create three offers. And from now on, when you get an order, Etsy will send off this note. When someone removes your product from the cart, then Etsy will send an offer to them for 35% off. And when someone favorites your item, then Etsy will send an offer for 30% off. Okay, so that's it for lesson three. I will see you in lesson four. Welcome to the fourth lesson where I'm going to show you how to deal with customers. Let me show you what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to handle your orders. You're going to learn how to give the best customer service, how to get five star reviews and how to deal with bad reviews and with bad customers. So let's begin by showing you how to handle your orders. To be able to see your orders, you need to go to your shop manager and then click here where it says orders and shipping. Now this isn't my main shop, this is just an abandoned shop of a friend of mine. This store doesn't have any sales, but when you receive an order, you can go and come here to complete it. You can tap on it, now it doesn't have anything. And now let me show you what you will do if you sell digital products. Uh, now I have an edited screenshot of this because I want to hide the products that I'm selling on my shop. If you have any orders of digital products, your page will look something like this. You will see the product and the title right here. And here you will see that the order is delivered. We do not care about that. The only thing that you care about is those two things. If the customer did not download their files or if the customer downloaded their files. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the customers that did not download their files. Now, if you see an order that says not downloaded, then you can click to the message icon to message the seller. What you should message the seller. Let me show you. You will begin by saying hi and then the name of the buyer. If the buyer doesn't have a name on Etsy, then just type hi. Thank them for ordering. Thank you so much for ordering. And you will say, Here's a quick guide on downloading your file, but you might say that I don't have a guide. Let me show you what I have. To be honest with you, I didn't make this guide. I took it from another seller and I changed the colors. I was bored to create one myself. This is what a guide should look like. It will say how to download your files and then you will show them how to download them. Downloading on your computer, click on you right here, and then click purchases and reviews. And then they will be able to see their order and click download to download their files. Now, if they check out as a guest and they don't have an Etsy account, then they will find the link to download their files to their email. And it says check also your spam and your social tabs too. And it says also message me if you are not able to find the file. I'll email the files to you within 24 hours of your request. Okay. Overall, just message me if you need to help downloading the files. Now, you will attach this file to the message, okay? Let's continue. If you can't access it, because it happens sometimes, let me know and I will send you a link 
to manually download it. Okay. Now, but how will I send them a link to download it? There are two ways to send the files to the customers. One way is just to ask for their email and then just send it to them. The other way, which is quicker, is to upload all of your files to a Google Drive account, then set your files to be able to be downloaded for only users that click on the link, and then you will copy the link of the file on your Google Drive and then just send it to the buyer on the chat that Etsy has. So there will be no need for you to send emails to them and stuff like that. It's way quicker this way. And now if you sell physical products, this tab might have something different than mine because I'm guessing that they will add shipping as well if you sell physical products. I have no idea because I don't sell physical products. But when someone orders, just send them a similar message. Let's say, hi Adam, thank you so much for ordering. Type something like, your order will ship to you in 5 to 10 days or something like that. And then type something if you have any questions, then let me know or something like that. Trust me, the customer will appreciate this and they will like you even more. So this is how to handle your orders. You can see all of the orders that you got on this page. When you see someone that did not download their files, just copy and paste the text I showed you and create a guide and attach it. Or if you sell physical products, just go with the strategy that I suggested and just send them a thank you note. Okay, that's all for handling your orders and I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to lesson 2, where I'm going to show you how to give the best customer service. Now, if you followed all the things I said with you in the previous lessons, then you should be able to get your first sales. This means that you now have to deal with customers. First of all, let me get this out of the way. Don't fall for Etsy scammers. Let me show you some examples of scammers. As you can see in my spam folder, I have many, many, many of those scammers. Let's read one. Let's read this one, for example. It says that they are from Etsy support. Hello, this is your Etsy staff employee speaking with you. Due to an update to our payment system and global security update, order processing for your account is currently suspended. You will need to identify your store. As soon as this is done, it will be back up and running normally. Please fill out this form to verify your store. Don't click on this link. Sincerely, Etsy staff. Let's see another one. Let's go to this one. Again, from Etsy support and they have the worst Etsy match ever. Hello, dear seller. Your item has been paid for by the buyer, but an error occurred while processing the order and the order cannot be displayed in your personal account. This is due to the update of the payment system on Etsy. Please enter your email in this chat to get a customized form or confirming your store. By specifying your email, you consent to the processing of your personal data. Thank you, service Etsy support. Okay. And I replied with this. Okay. The bad thing is that you do need to respond to them because to get the star seller badge, you need to respond to 95% of your messages. So I don't respond to some of them, but, but if I'm in a good mood, then I will respond to them with the type of response you saw earlier. To verify if the message is actually from Etsy, you can see right here on the categories on the messages that we have from Etsy. These two messages are actually from Etsy. It says right here it is verified message from Etsy staff. If it's not a verified image, then you should not enter your email, clicking links or whatever else. Just to be safe, ignore those messages, okay? Now I'm in the other account. Now you will get messages from scammers when you upload your first listings. Let's see some of those as well. Hello, I'm attempting to make a purchase. Would you assist me? This seems like an ordinary customer. As you can see, my friend replied, Yes, how can I help you? I have a problem paying for your item. I'm trying to buy using my gift card balance, but for some reason it asks for your email address for payment. Can I get it? I'm waiting for your reply. Best wishes. If someone is asking for your email, then they are a scammer. So do not respond to them. And another one, it starts with the same. It starts with the same opening because it is the same person. As you can see, they have very similar photo profiles. Of course, how can I help you? 
I live in the US, this might be because I'm attempting to pay with a gift card. I can't do it in another way. The system is asking for your email address for payment. I wrote to technical support by the tell me that to pay with a gift card I need your email address and then I can continue. So do not give them your email and let's move on. Now let's go to the good customers. You will mainly get two types of messages. You will get messages from people that want to buy from your shop and under their message it will say first time reaching out and you will get messages for people that already buy it from your shop and under the message it will say probably help request. Let's begin with the people that are first reaching out to you. The people that haven't buy from you yet. You should definitely try to respond to them as quickly as you can. Because if you don't respond to them quickly, then they will move on from you and they will go to another seller and that seller will collect all the profit. Okay, so I want you to download the Etsy seller app to your phone Go to Play Store or the App Store and then download the Etsy Seller app. Now, if you have the app, every time someone is messaging you, you will receive a notification. And when you receive a notification, at least in the start, you will not ignore it and you will click on it immediately and you will respond to the potential buyer. Let's, and let's go to the other category of messages, which are help requests. These are from people that already buy from you. Then they have a problem and they need help from you. You should definitely respond quickly to them, but okay, it's not necessary to reply as fast as you would have for people that reaching out for the first time. But I think that you should treat everyone the same and respond to them as quickly as you can. Be kind to them. I know that this is so simple, but be kind. And be excited that people are messaging you. We want to show that we are happy to help them. If someone reaches out for you for the first time, then, then say to them, thank you so much for reaching out their name. And they probably will ask you some kind of question like, hey, are those digital products or whatever else? Yes, these are digital products. And if you have any more questions, I will be more than happy to help you. Okay, just say something like that. This thing goes as well for the customers that already buy from you. Uh, they will have a question, for example, I can download the files, respond to them by thanking them that they order from your shop, add their name to the message. Thank you so much for ordering, Rachel. People love it when you add their name into the message. It feels more human and it doesn't seem like you have an autoresponder. Just be kind and excited to talk to people and show it to them. Now, to give the best customer service, you will do everything that they ask. You will need to fulfill any of their wishes. You will need to fulfill any request that they might have, even if it's not related to your shop. Let me show you an example. I sell sports printables in my shop, but one time a customer who liked my posters reached out to me and they asked me if I can create this for them. Let me show it to you. This type of posters. Now, of course, these type of posters are not related to what I'm selling in my stores, these are not sports related, but I still agreed to create them for them. I created them, but I didn't list them to my shop because okay, I didn't want to destroy my shop and make it seem that I sell random stuff on my store. I made the designs and I told the seller to purchase something from my store first. They could keep the thing that they purchased and they would also get these posters right here. And we will talk about it more uh, in the next lesson, but this got me a 5 star review. These are things that the customer really appreciates if you respond quickly to them, if you are kind to them, and if you are willing to do everything they ask. If they do ask something that is extreme, uh, of course don't do it. <laughs> if they ask you to do something offensive or whatever, yeah, of course don't do it. If they ask you to do anything else that is innocent, then absolutely take your chance and create it for them. I'm sure that they will give you also a 5 star review Believe me, you will do some extra work. This will pay out for you in the future. This is how to give the best customer service. I will see you in the next lesson when I'm going to show you how to get 5 star reviews. Welcome to the next lesson and probably one of the most important lessons when I'm going to show you how to get 5 star reviews almost every time. Now let's talk about why 5 star reviews are so important. 
Now let's go to a random page on Etsy and let's see the sellers in the first page. This seller has 36,000 reviews and has an average of 4.9 stars. Here, 500 reviews, 13,000 reviews, 400, 700, 1.5k, 1k, 2.5k, 5.1k, 13k, 13k, 2k, 7.8k. Do you see anyone in this page that has less than 100 reviews and they all have an average of 4.9 stars or 5 stars? Which is very important. Let's say for example, this seller with 3000 reviews, they will get more sales than this seller who has 100 reviews. Okay, reviews matter a lot. The more 5 star reviews you get, the more people will trust you over time. So the more 5 star reviews you have, the more sales you're going to make. You should aim to have at least an average of 4.8 stars because if you have 4.8 stars and above, then you will be able to get the star seller badge, which as you can see right here, it plays a major role. Most of the sellers right here have the star seller badge. And if you have a star seller badge, this will make people trust you even more. Now that we learned that 5 star reviews are very important, Let's see how to get 5 star reviews. And it basically works every time for me. You can give the customer the best service. But this doesn't force the customer to give you a 5 star review. So we need to take action, kind of force the customer to give us a 5 star review. We will do it in a persuasive way and they will even be happy to do it for us. Okay, let me show you how. There are two things that you can do. The first thing is to offer them a gift if they give you a 5 star review. And the second thing that you can do is to offer them a discount for their next purchase if they give you a 5 star review. If you sell digital products, this will be amazing for you. I promise you. It doesn't cost you anything to give them a digital product for free. If you sell physical products, then this will be more challenging. But if you can give something away for free that has a very low cost for you, then you can absolutely do it. But for you, for physical products, I would suggest to give them a discount for the next purchase. Now let me show you how to do it. Let me show you the example. Hi, name of the buyer. I'm feeling generous today and I want to reward you for being an awesome customer. Now change this a bit if you want, don't copy and paste it. I'm willing to give you up to three designs of your choice for free. The only thing that you have to do is to give me a five star review to your order and then copy this to help them to give the 5 star review if they don't know how to do it. On the Etsy app, sign in and tap you. Go to purchases and reviews. Find my product and choose the star rating next to review this item. Optional, describe the item and the service you received. So this will lead to not getting just plain 5 star reviews, it will lead to getting high value reviews that other potential customers can benefit from. Then you can give instructions on how they can receive their gifts. Then take screenshots or send me a link to the designs that you want. And the last step is to tell me your email so I can send them to you. Now I just send them uh, links from my Google Drive so I don't have to go to this process. So I do not longer follow this process. You can personalize this message to what you want to give. Maybe you want to give one design for free. I believe that the more you give, the more chances of the buyer actually giving you a 5 star review. Now if you offer just one simple digital file, maybe the buyer will be not as interested as if you offer them let's say 3. And you can change this to whatever you like. You can receive one ebook. You can receive $10 off to your next purchase. You can receive a 50% discount to your next purchase. Play with this and then give them instructions on how to give the review and instructions on how to receive their gifts. Okay, as you can see this works, thank you so much for the offer, I left the 5 star review, below are the screenshots of the images and my email is this one. Okay, and as you can see it works. And now don't expect every customer to give you a 5 star review because some of them will never see this message. And if they don't read your message, then they cannot give you a 5 star review. Now in my case, 20 to 30% of people 
are actually leaving a review, which is a very good percentage. Just follow this strategy. I promise you that basically no one else is doing it. Make sure to personalize your message because now that I'm sharing this strategy, many of you will copy this message and it will seem very repetitive to customers. So make this personalized, change it a bit and don't worry, they will not suspend your Etsy shop if you do this. I've done this for over six months. I have an average of five star reviews to my shop and I have hundreds of five star reviews. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is word of mouth. Now, if you give so much value to customers successfully, as I told you in this chapter, by giving them the best customer service and assuming that your product is actually good, then those customers will talk about your shop to other people. Now, let me show you some examples. Wow, thank you for the great customer service. I will definitely tell about you to other parents of my son's football team. Do you realize how awesome this is? A football team will have at least 16 to 22 kids, so I got an advertisement to 20 people for free. And this is the power of word of mouth. And that's why it is the most important thing you want to achieve as an Etsy seller. And if you actually achieve this, then you will get tons of Etsy sales. Let me show you some other examples. Thank you so much. Honestly, so lovely of you. Do you see how much they appreciate your offer? Amazing customer service. We will definitely order from you again. Thank you so much. Have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And yeah, this was in December, okay? But I get messages like this very often. And as you can see right here, they say, we will definitely order from you again. You will get many returning customers just by using the strategy I told you earlier. What a great gift. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year too. We will buy here again for the next birthday. As you can see, returning customers. So if you follow this strategy, I promise you that you will get the star seller badge and you will become a successful Etsy seller eventually. I will see you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about how to deal with bad reviews and with bad customers. See you soon. Welcome to the last lesson in chapter 4, where I'm going to show you how to deal with bad reviews and with bad customers. Let's begin. Now, even with the strategy that I showed you, you will still receive bad reviews. The customer might not like your product and they will leave a negative review. First of all, in my opinion, even 4 stars is a bad review. It's bad because it lowers your average star review and we don't want that. We want at least an average of 4.8 stars to get the star seller badge. Now, if you get a review that is 4 stars, 3 stars, 2 stars or 1 star, which is obviously the worst, then I want you to do this. When you see the review, you will have an option to message the buyer. Don't respond to them publicly, just message them privately. Now, if it was a 4 star review, then you can offer them more gifts to change the review to 5 star reviews. Now, if it is a 3 star, 2 star or 1 star review, then you will have to give them a refund. Now, every time you give a refund, you will not only lose your profit, you will actually lose more than that, which is a very bad thing. Now, if you sell digital products, you're probably selling cheap stuff, so this won't affect you very much by losing some cents away. And I think it's worth it because you will maintain your star seller badge and you will maintain a very good score of star rating. If let's say for the 4 star reviews, you give them gifts and this doesn't work, then you will offer them a refund. Okay, obviously they will need to first change the review and then you will give them a refund. If they won't change the review, then just leave them as it is. You will have a bad review to your store, but at least you got a profit. And lastly, how to deal with bad customers. Now, if someone buys from you and they are a pain in the ass, then absolutely offer them a refund. For example, I had a customer that ordered a printable poster and they didn't realize that it was a printable poster. They thought that they would receive a poster to their home with just a 3 or 4 dollar order that they placed. I replied to them by offering them a refund because I didn't want them to place a negative review, but the customer just ignored my offer and they would go on for multiple messages telling me about the products I sell, do not make any sense, 
telling me that I can just download them from Google or whatever else and print them. And I was basically explaining to them the benefits of ordering from me. And they kept on with the negative stuff. And it really started bothering me because I was now just wasting my time by replying to this buyer. And I ended it by saying, look, I get what you're saying. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Do you want me to offer you a refund? I'm very happy to do it. And I just left it at that. And the buyer didn't even take it. And they didn't even respond again. So if you have bad customers like this, then I just highly advise you to give them a refund and get done with it. Or if they haven't purchased something from you yet, and if they're reaching out for the first time and you see a lot of negative things from them, then you can skip this buyer. Unless if you don't have any sales, then you would definitely do everything for a sale. So yeah, that's how to deal with bad customers. Basically, either don't accept them as your buyers if they're not a buyer yet, or just give them a refund and get over it. So that's it for the lesson four. And I will see you in the last chapter of this course, which is lesson five. See you there. Welcome to the last chapter of this course, Scaling Your Etsy Shop. Let's begin. Let me show you what you're going to learn in this last lesson. First, you're going to learn how to analyze your stats and optimize your listings. Then how to manage your time effectively, how to create more listings, how to increase your sales, and how to work less and make more money. Let's begin by analyzing our stats and optimizing our listings. Once you have uploaded your listings, now you can check the performance. Now for this to work, you should have multiple listings at least for one month. I want you to go to your shop manager and then tap stats. After that, you can go here and set it to the last 30 days or you can go ahead and check all time. I'm gonna go with all time, okay? Be now because this account doesn't have any sales, I'm gonna go to my main account and I will show you how to check your stats. Now I'm here and as you can see, we can see the views, the favorites, the amount of orders and the revenue. Now by default, this will be sorted to views and keep it like that. Now this will show us first our most viewed listings and if we tap here, it will show us the listings that have the least amount of views. I want you to begin by viewing your least viewed listings. This is a new listing and it hasn't got any views yet. As you can see right here, this is an old listing and it has only three views, zero favorites, zero orders, zero revenue. This isn't a good listing. Also, three views, at least it has one favorite, three views, four views. Let's go to the next page. Four views, five views. Now, I do have hundreds of listings, so I do have a lot of listings that don't get enough views. But as you can see right here, this one has five views, but at least it got one sale. This one also, six views, one sale. As well, this one as well, six views, one sale, six views, one sale, seven views, two sales. As you can see, I have many listings that didn't perform well but at least they got one sale. If you have hundreds of listings as well, many of your listings will probably look like this because you have hundreds of them. Not everything is going to go well for you. Now, what you can do is to edit all of those listings, change the titles, the descriptions, and the tags, and check them again after one or two months and see if anything has changed. Now, the other thing that you can do is to sort it by your most viewed listings, I want you to check your best performing listings, and this is clearly mine, and I want you to analyze all of those listings and make similar listings to them. Since those listings are performing very well, if you do similar listings, they might as well perform well. So if it already works, then you can capitalize on that and make more sales. Now this should have already gave you ideas to create more listings, and you, and you need to go ahead and do that. That's it for the start. You can check the revenue, you can check the amount of orders, you can check the favorites, but the most important thing are the views. This is how you should check your stats and optimize your listings. I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how to find time to work on your Etsy shop. Let's begin. 
I know that most of you work a 9-to-5 job, some of you are parents, or both, you might work a 9-to-5 job and you are a parent as well. So finding time to work on Etsy isn't actually the easiest thing in the world. The reality is that at the beginning of your Etsy career, you will need to work hard consistently to get your shop running. Now, how can you find that time to work on your Etsy shop? If you work, let's say, an office job that is not very demanding, then I think you can probably find some time at work to check what's going on on your Etsy shop, to talk to your customers, to check your orders, or if your job is not as strict and you have time, then you can probably create a listing or two. Now, if you work on a job and you don't have access to a computer, then you can use your phone. Of course, if you're allowed to check on your phone while working. You can receive notifications from Etsy, and you can apply to customers, you can check your orders, you can check everything on your phone, but you cannot probably create listings. It literally takes less than a minute to respond to a customer. You can send them their files, you can respond to help requests, you can do all those things while at your work that barely require any of your time. Now, if you are a parent, you have to take care of your kids, you have to help them read, you have to cook, you have to clean, you have to do many of those things. And I'm sure you struggle to find time to work on your Etsy shop, but I believe that even the busiest human in this world has at least one free hour in their day. I'm sure that you can find one free hour every day, and I want you to make this hour as productive as you can. I want you to take your phone and just leave it in another room. That's what I do when I work, so I don't get distracted. And in that hour, I want you to at least create one listing. If you can create more, perfect. Just set the goal to create an amount of listings every day. Believe me, it will be hard at the start. You will suffer. You will think that you're doing all of this work for nothing. But believe me, when you will have your best sellers, you will work less over time and all that hard work that you put at the start will be absolutely worth it. Okay, even one hour a day is enough for you to get your shop running. Now, if you have more free time, then spend as many hours as you can on your Etsy shop. If you spend multiple hours on your Etsy shop, then your shop will probably become successful in less time than those people who spend, let's say, one hour a day. But find at least one free hour on your day, check throughout the day your notifications, respond to your customers, and I promise you that the amount of work will decrease over time. This was Managing Your Time. I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to the next lesson, where I'm going to show you how to create more listings. There is nothing wrong with creating more listings. If you upload more listings, then you will increase your chances of creating a bestseller. The more listings you have, the more views you're going to get, and this will lead to more sales. I get this question a lot. Is it okay to upload multiple listings a day? Once, I think I uploaded 40 listings in a day. So trust me, Etsy doesn't care about that. They will not ban you because you pay for those listings. It's time you create the listings. You pay Etsy 20 cents, so Etsy makes more money. So it doesn't make sense to ban you. So upload as many listings as you want in a day. Okay, and how to create more listings? Let me give you some examples. Let's say you sell t-shirts and you sell those t-shirts in three colors. Let's say it's white, black, and red. Instead of creating one listing, which has all the three colors, you can create three listings, one listing with a black t-shirt, one listing with a white t-shirt, and one listing with a red one. Okay, now you get the point. Remember when I said in the first lesson of part five that you can check your best performing listings and create similar listings to those? Well, go ahead and do that. Create more of those listings because they are working for you. Okay, I will also show you in the next lesson how to create more listings and decrease your sales at the same time. So I'm gonna see you there. Welcome to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about how to increase your sales. And you're also going to increase the amount of listings you have. I talked about it in the previous lesson. If it's working, create more. Okay, to increase your sales. Now, the first strategy you can use to increase your sales is a loss leader. Now, what is a loss leader? A loss leader is selling your product at a price that is not profitable. But its purpose is to attract new customers to buy things from your store. 
Now let's see some examples of loss leaders. Now let me go on Etsy and let's type leather. Let's tap on this one. Okay. And now let's go to the store. As you can see, it has a fair amount of sales. A good store. As you can see right here, the seller mainly sells Apple Watch bands, iPhone cases, other phone cases, AirPod cases, and some other products, but mainly tries to give a premium look to Apple products. Now, if you go to a uh, sort right here, and let's go to lowest price. We will see that the seller is listing the leather that they're using. It's not like they're going to make a lot of profit doing this, but look at this listing. This is a best seller as you can see right here. And it's already in eight cards. And it's not even the main thing that the seller is selling. This strategy clearly worked for the seller and it got them many sales. Now, if you're going to buy leather from the seller, then you're probably going to buy something else from here. So this is a very good example of a loss leader. You can do this with other products like print on demand and digital products. Since you're not dealing with the shipping, you can create some listings that you're not making any profit of them, but they will attract customers and this will lead to you increasing your sales and overall increasing your visits to your store. Okay. The second thing that you can do is to sell different products. For me, I used to sell only printable posters, but I discovered that I can sell many other products in my niche. So I created birthday cards and cake toppers, which in my case turned out to be a loss leader. I was making a bit of profit on them. They drove additional sales to my store and they increased my sales to my posters. Let's say you create things with leather. Instead of just creating wallets, for example, Create other things like these things or you can create belts, you can create bags, you can create journals, you can create other things like leather roses, portfolio organizer, card wallets, bookmarks. Just look in your niche and see what other people are selling and create more products, don't stick just one. For example, if you sell print on demand, then you can take a design like this and sell it as a poster, you can sell it as a mug, you can sell it to whatever product that you like. You can also make this a loss leader, create this exact same listing but only as a digital file. You can absolutely create a hybrid store where you can sell physical products and digital products as well. And the last strategy is to sell sets or bundles. Let me type sets. I don't care if you sell digital products, print on demand or physical products. It is a must to create sets. Let's see some examples. Bridesmaid pyjama sets, knife sets, dining set, clothing set, personalized birthday gift for women, whiskey sets, jewelry set. Let's go to digital products. You can create poster sets. You can basically create anything with sets. My top three best performing listings are sets. Selling sets will explode your shop with sales. I promise you that. People love buying sets. Or if you sell digital products, you can create bundles, as you can see right here. You can buy the whole entire shop from the seller. Junk general whole shop bundle. You can sell a bundle of stock photos. A bundle with SVG files. Streetwear designs mega bundle. Motivational reels bundle. Okay, you can basically sell anything in a bundle. Whole shop mock-up bundles. Sound effects and presets include sets and bundles to your store. Trust me, it will make a big difference. So overall, if it's working, create more, create loss leaders, sell different products, and sell sets and bundles. If you do all this, you will create more listings and you will increase your sales. See you in the last lesson of the course. Welcome to the last lesson of the course where I'm going to talk about how to work less and make more money. If you follow all the things I told you in this course and work hard, then after a certain point, when your monthly income increases each month, then you can slowly decrease the amount of work and see if your monthly income is still increasing or it's maintained at the point where you're satisfied. If you work less and your monthly profit is increasing and you are happy with that, then you can decrease the time that you work even more. 
Now, if you sell digital products and print on demand, you can just sit back and enjoy all the profit if you want. You can even take months without creating new listings and you will still make a ton of sales. Now, the only thing that I want you to do is to reply to customers and check if they got their file or check if they got their product to their home. And that's it for you. Enjoy your passive income. If you sell physical products and services, it's a lot harder to decrease the amount of work, but you can reach a point where you hire people to do the work for you. It will be more difficult for you to make passive income, but it's absolutely possible if you find good people to do the work for you. You might even not want to make passive income. You might not want to hire people. You might love selling on Etsy and you love doing all the work. Then you can absolutely continue with that way. I hope that now that you learned all of this information, that you will be able to finally start your own business and make some good money. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts about the course. Did I miss something that you wanted to learn? I would love to hear about your feedback. I wish you to get thousands of sales on Etsy. I would love to see your results. And I will see you soon. Goodbye.